Underwriting support for Hometown Sunday Morning from the Sharon Valley Tavern since the 1930s, serving the community with a rich history and roots dating back to the 1800s. Today, the tavern continues to serve the residents of the tri-state region with a relaxing atmosphere seven days a week. Food, friends, and fun the old-fashioned way, 860-364-9355. You'll find them on Facebook, Sharon Valley Tavern. Associated Lightning Rod Route 22 in Millerton, installing lightning protection for homes and businesses for well over 50 years, 518 789 ALRCI.com on the web. Sagala Turnkey Housing, Route 7 in Canaan, an authorized independent builder for Westchester Modular Homes, 860-824-0019, Sagalas.com. Roaring Oaks Florist in Lakeville, Connecticut, unique designs with personal attention, RoaringOaksFlorist.com. Dave's TV, Route 44 in Millerton, New York, everything for home entertainment, video, audio, satellite TV, 518-789-3881, Dave's TV.net. McEnroe Organic Farm Market, Route 22 in Millerton open year round seven days a week. 518 789 4191 McEnroe Organic Farm.com. Northeast Muffler Route 22 in Millerton, New York. 518 789 3669 on Facebook. Northeast Muffler. Upcountry Services in Sharon serving the northwest corner and neighboring Dutchess County for over 30 years. 800 791 2916. Upcountry Services.com. Listeners, it's August 26th. It's two minutes after the nine o'clock hour, and you're listening to Hometown Sunday Morning on Robin Hood Radio. I'm Chad Wildy. I've got a few PSAs for you. Let's get started. It's the last day of the Duchess County Fair. That happens today from 10 a.m. to 11 p.m. at the Duchess County Fairgrounds, 550 Springbrook Avenue in Rhinebeck. Visit duchessfair.com or call 845 876 4000 for more information. In Wissaic, the Auxiliary of the Wissaic Fire Company will sponsor a breakfast and bake sale today from 8 to 11 a.m. The menu includes pancakes, French toast, eggs, any style, bacon, sausage, hash browns, toast, juice, and coffee. Prices are $8 for adults, $7 for seniors, and $5 for children age 9 and under. The breakfast will be held at the Wissaic Firehouse, 23 Firehouse Road. This Thursday is the last day of the Canaan VFW's Sunset Series. The artists will be two guys in suits and ties. Somebody will be going home with a brand new kayak. The American Legion Post 178 on Route 44 in Millerton is having a clam bake Sunday, September 30th. This is happening from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. Raw and steamed clams, shaved steak sandwiches, sausage, chicken, chowder, draft beer, soda, water. It is $35 per person. Come have some fun. They're going to be throwing horseshoes and a corn bag toss. Jack Keefe Memorial Law Enforcement Four Ball Scramble is happening Friday, September 14th. You can call... I believe this is Mo Spadacini at 860-824-0660. The entry fee is $85 per player, and that includes everything you need, green fees, a cart, uh, there's going to be prizes, and such. Finally, the second annual PJ Mannion Golf Tournament will be happening Monday, October 1st. The club at River Oaks, 2 Evans Hill Road in Sherman, Connecticut. It's $160 per person. This includes barbecue. At 11.30 is a check-in, lunch is provided, at 12.30 is a shotgun start in a scramble format, and at 5 p.m. is a cocktail hour. Proceeds will benefit the Help Hope Live Northeast Transplant Fund to insist the uninsured with medical expenses. For Robin Hood Radio, I'm Chad Wildy. Patriot Larry, Farmer Paul. I'm NASCAR Day. Welcome to uh, this additional Hometown Sunday Morning. <clears throat> and joining us in the studio... Uh, it's none other than the one of the co-founders, Marshall Miles. And um, as I listened this week to the um, Breakfast Club, Marshall uh, 
quite a few new underwriters are coming on board. Absolutely amazing, and uh, and the great thing is uh, they're calling us, uh, which is which is which is really nice, which is uh, which means that uh, we finally reached that point where people realize that uh, we're an effective uh, uh, daily media, uh, even though we're public radio, to to reach uh, when their businesses. Uh, uh, the, la- the, la- the latest people are the people that uh, have started that uh, hard cider stand, which is uh, unbelievable. At McEnroe, it opened up this weekend. Uh, they've got uh, New York State cider. They've got food. They got everything, and it's going to run Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays uh, until the weather shuts them down. Uh, yeah, from four to eight. Yeah, it's what? called the. There's a sign out front that says the Cider Shack, and that's yeah. it. What it is, they built a. A little uh, building, and it looks like old-fashioned shack. It's pretty unique what they've, they've got, done. They've got great hard cider, regular cider. They got the food. They've got the. It really is. It really is quite. And you're going to interview those guys this week. Yeah, I'm going to interview the um, the cider maker, and I'm going to interview the um, executive chef from McEnroe Organic, and we'll get the we'll get all the details of you know what they're serving with the ciders and the. And the different things, but that a lot of that cider is made uh, locally. It's all New York State cider. Yeah, it's so all. I mean, it's, it's all New York State cider. And you know, cider has become very big uh, lately. Well, in the last even, year or two, they've even got a rosé cider. I mean, it really has become uh, where they went and they found. Uh, I forget what country where they've got these apples that are red all the way through. And when you make cider, it comes out to be a rosé color. Really, uh, but it still tastes like uh, cider, and it's got an alcohol content. Uh, and so, uh, I mean, yeah, it's become very, very, very big. Well, and they're they're excited about this uh, cider shack because it's out it's outdoors, and they they have tables outdoors and beautiful setting. They have a nice garden set up type thing with flowers and bushes and so forth. So, uh, I can't wait to uh, do the interview this week. And uh, as soon as I do, I'll bring it over to you, and maybe you can play it even in the morning. Oh, um, abso- oh absolutely. Because uh, that's great, and it's good. It's really nice, like you say, to to. Uh, think that uh, folks know that people are listening to this station and uh, we want to we want to advertise what we're doing here well we even had Olana the Olana sti- uh, historic site state historic site call us and they, yeah, heard us, what? they heard us they heard us we we've been doing a PSA announcements for them because they're a non-for-profit and I guess somebody some members of the board said you know what let's let's support them and so they they've come on um, uh, family propane has come on uh, in, in the in the past uh, few weeks. I'm, I'm trying to think. Of, uh, there's two others that, that are slipping my mind now that have also come on, and uh, and we've got a big deal going with Lime Rock for this uh, for the for the for the festival weekend. Yeah, you know that's uh, like this week. Yeah. You do understand? Oh, that well, already, I, don't have, right? I don't have to worry about it. Yeah, Liz and Maddie, uh, our NPR gals, are putting everything together. We're going to have uh, on Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. We're going to have right down by this Patake, we're going to be right by where they put all the winners on, on the platform and everything. We're going to have a bargain bar and sh- shack that's going to have all this vintage clothing because it is vintage, vintage weekend. weekend. Yeah. And we're going to have all this vintage clothing. They're going to have vintage hat contests. Uh, and if I'm if I'm around, I'll MC it. If not, they'll they'll MC it. Um, but so the bargain barn will be at the vintage festival this year. The the, the gals there are going to set it up on Friday. And be there all day Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. How cool is that? Yeah. So it's, and it's really nice to work in cooperation with uh, with Lime Rock on that. Beautiful. Yeah. It's it's, it's kind of that's cool. going to be neat with with the old clothes, you know, era clothes with the cars and so forth. That really be. I bet some of the. I bet I bet you'll you'll get rid of a lot of product because people they get into that. We first started uh, going on the road at the Falcon Ridge Folk Festival. Bub let us uh, come up there and set up a, a tent, and that and the and the gals uh, stayed up there all weekend long uh, and had a great time and sold a lot of stuff. Uh, and uh, they're going to be now at Lime Rock for the Vintage Festival, which could be kind of should be kind of cool. No, oh, beautiful. Yeah. And of course, that that all kicks off Thursday with the parade of cars. Yes. And that's already it's like four days from now. Yeah, right, it's uh, it's 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 amazing how time flies. <laughs> that's all I can say. It goes by real quick. <clears throat> well. So now you also want to talk about Always Patsy Klein. I was there for the opening, and the opening was spectacular. Uh, but they've been selling tickets to this. Uh, it's an unbelievable show. Everybody that I've talked to, and I've talked to <coughs> numerous people that have gone and seen this show. They said it it brings the house down. It's phenomenal. I talked to Floyd Hosier yesterday. He and Craig Goblow and their wives went 
<clears throat> the other the other afternoon or the other evening, and they sat in the front row. They said it was just an incredible show, really, really entertaining. And they had the show last Sunday where where veterans uh, got in for free. Uh, the the guys that are run, that are running the theater, they're managing the theater, are doing a real great job. Uh, they have the Pirates of Penzance coming. I think it's in October. Uh, it used to be done locally every year, and a, a real full production of Pirates of Penzance, which is <coughs> fun for families, it used to be done every year at Hoskins, but it, it hasn't been done. They're going to bring that back, and they're going to bring it back at the Playhouse, Beautiful. which is which is all local people, and they, they, they do an amazing job. They're combining with the Salisbury Sinfonetta uh, to do that. So yeah, they're doing a great job. SharonPlayhouse.org for tickets. SharonPlayhouse.org. Always Patsy Klein. I think they have another week and a half uh, run. Now, what the other thing last night? I took Helen back to the to Noble. Uh, I took her out for the afternoon, and then when I was taking her back, the Salisbury Band was performing. assembled, and they were performing in front of the library. That's their last official performance of the year. They do. I think they come back. The Hot Shots come back during um, the uh, um, what should we call it? Uh, the Columbus Day weekend at Salisbury Fall oh, Festival. Yeah, yeah. I think they come back. But this is their last official summer performance. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what. There are people. They brought their lawn chairs, their little picnic basket type right. things with snacks. And probably some wine or whatever, and they were sitting there listening to the music. It was it was pretty wild. I almost pulled over because yeah. I didn't know what it was about because I hadn't read anything about it. Well, you know, it's funny uh, around here. I want to go back to Lime Rock for a second. We're, we're setting up there, right? It's Vintage Festival. Somebody said, and this is, I couldn't believe it. Well, what are you, what are you going to set up at the Vintage Festival for? Uh, these are people are going to, you know, you want people to drive Maseratis. And I looked at the woman and I said, no, 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 no. You don't understand. Maseratis are beautiful, expensive collector cars. But we're talking about cars like Bugattis, <laughs> which are, <laughs> which are you know, tenfold over that. We're talking about yeah. Cobras. We're talking about cars that are worth a million, two, three million dollars a piece. I said, this is the perfect venue for, for the people that come because they, husbands and wives and families come, uh, not only with those cars, but also they have the different paddocks and stuff like that. And you couldn't present a better place to have vintage clothing. And this weekend, people are already in town, by the way. Oh, absolutely. People are, are. already in town for this. So uh, this, is a, this is a real big weekend. That's what you say. You know, we've talked about racing, whether it be a Lime Rock or on a national level. But you, people, I don't think they really realize the volume of, cash that's infused in the local area in our tri-state area with people staying at hotels eating at our restaurants buying gas getting coffee at the coffee shops the on and on and on it goes i mean it's incredible going to the art stock shop going to did they go to they, they during the week while, while they're here on when they're here because they come they they go to the different shops they they, they browse and it not only expense to our area but expense it like to millerton and to toys i mean people that come here Spend money here because they're here yeah. not just for a day or two days. They're here for about a week. Oh, yeah. And a yeah. lot of people stay up in Great Barrington because there's three or four hotels yeah. up that way. And so we reach up to uh, Great Barrington so they, they can hear us up there and listen to us and, and the whole nine yards. So it works. And we're getting some good feedback, early feedback, even though we haven't tuned it up because I haven't been up, back up to that horrible mountain. Uh, the <laughs> engi engineer is going back up on, uh, I think, Monday or Tuesday. We will be able to tweak the signal, but we're here. We're hearing from people in both uh, right down the 22 corridor to Dover Plains, and I mean to uh, Pauling, and down the uh, Route 7 corridor to Kent. We're we're starting to hear from people. So nice. Yeah. So that's 97.5. 97.5 yeah, FM. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's about it. Other than, all right. Yeah. So, are we doing the parade? Someone's going to be there. I mean, uh, I've got, we got to figure this out. Uh, I think it's going to be me, unless something else. I mean, we try to come up with different people that can do it just in case something happens with different people. So, yes, we will be at the In Falls Village one way or the other for the parade. Uh, is that because have you talked to the powers to be? Or are we going to be able to get chairs on the porch, or are we going to have to bring lawn chairs this year? No, I think— I, I think haven't talked to any of them in a while, Colin I think, or Sue. Well, I think we just have when we we show up, we just say to people— we're doing a broadcast from those chairs. That's it. That's what I did. That's what I did during the uh, during the car show. 
uh, some very nice people were sitting there, and I came up with the banner and stuff like that. Like I said, we do a broadcast. Oh, no, fine. Thank you very much. And they moved over. Boy. That, see, that's over. what you had. But that, I did you can nicely. do that when you have power, though. But I, I guess. But, I, but, I but, guess that must be it. But I did it nicely. Yeah. I did it nicely. You didn't say get out of the chairs because we're doing broadcast. No, and also, I, I, I did put on a... Uh, I, I kind of made my limp look a little worse like, you know. I, <laughs> I was, oh, I was please. <laughs> Don't go I, there. I was looking for a little, a little sympathy. Sympathy, and I yeah. Think, I th- and the whole ball, and I was nice, mm. and I had a limp, and I was sweating, and I, they just decided, you know, we don't want this person to fall down yeah. in front of us. <laughs> well, that's all good, though, but that, uh, that truly is a fun show, and it's all free. It yeah. uh, doesn't cost you a nickel to go. And, and I don't know why we, actually, I don't know why we broadcast. We probably shouldn't even broadcast from it because the minute the cars start to come in, they're unmuffled. And yeah, you can't, you hear, can't hear us. You can't hear us. Yeah, I mean, we're doing an interview and also all you hear is, <laughs> yeah, it's true. It happens every year. Every year. <laughs> we sit there and go, oh, and you listen to them back and you say, why are we doing this? Just, well, I get a couple interviews in before they <laughs> come know, in, and then you just it might as well just shut just, it down. Just because, sit there and enjoy it. Because and then even when one just decides they're going to leave, just it's, that it's just, one car drowns you out. Yeah, they're just uh, they're, so, but it, but it's fun. That that's that's become a, that that uh, that race parade has become a big part of the uh, of the weekend. So and it's hard to believe that Labor Day is already here. That's what I'm. That's what I'm thinking. It's, uh, the summer's gone. Well, even it's not. It, it's really a week from Monday. Yeah, it's a yeah, week but, from but, Monday. But it's still Labor Day weekend. Is coming up. A it's week coming from up now. starting Thursday. Is it? Yeah. yeah. Thursday, oh. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Hmm. So. so <laughs> well, he had too much corn this week. Yeah, I've been yeah. eating too much corn. I <laughs> need some been, more. He's been corn holed. <laughs> <laughs> you said that on the air. Thanks. Yeah, well, well yeah, we're going to get to We're going to get Larry to Larry bought in corn, and it's, and it's, and it's corn from. It's, all ha- it's, it's mostly gone. Yeah. Corn it's from almost one of our, There's only two years that's been It's gone. one from one of our underwriters, Daisy Hill, Hill Daisy who Hill, have yeah. had some phenomenal corn this year. The corn has been <clears throat> tremendous. It's don't, sweet. Don't, don't need butter. Don't need anything on it. Just, And I'm telling you folks, the best way to have corn now, so you don't have to make a whole bunch of them, I, the microwave trick works. You take an oh, ear yeah. of corn, you put it in, and you put it in for a minute and 45 seconds. Take it out with gloves, and then you cut the big end off, right? And then it slides right out, and it is unbelievable. Oh, with the husk. Yeah, with the husk. Yeah, and it I steams, never tried that. It steams in the husk. A minute and 45 seconds for each one. And when you, you have to be careful because it's hot. You take it out, you cut the end off, the real thick end, and then you just, the, the corn slides out, and it is unbelievable. Hmm. I have to I try was, that. It's put one it of, in it's, damp paper towels. Yeah. So I'll have to try that. Yeah, it's it's amazing. You wow. leave it in the husk. It steams. It's unbelievable. Where did you learn that trick, Chef? I was. I, <laughs> it, people were talking. It was a it was a show that was on about what microwaves are good for, and one of the first things they said, other than reheating food and stuff like that, is if you don't want to if you've got sweet corn and you don't want to make a a pot of it, you're. And you want to, you've got three people, and you want to make three ears. You put them in minute forty five for each one, so if you, five minutes, and boom, they're done. And you don't have to heat up that pot of water. You don't have to make your kitchen hot and stuff like that. Hmm. That's that's how I learned about it's that. It's truly amazing. So what do you do with the silk? You leave the silk on it. Oh, we, we, when it comes out, yeah, I'm but I mean, you cook it with the silk on. Everything, everything. It comes right out. It comes right <laughs> out. When you when you when you start pushing it from the one end, it slides out. There's no silk on it or anything. It comes out beautiful. So, Paul, do you know what this silk is? Uh, I've got silk pajamas. No. Do you it's know not the you, same do thing? Do you know what you know what that is? Those little strands. Those the long, low grade. The long you know where I learned hair. that from? I learned that from Dave Teeter right. years ago on this show. Not this show, but on the morning on the breakfast club. He said each individual kernel uh-huh. has one of those fibers attached to it because that's how it's fed. Yeah. Well, that I didn't know. See? Just you like learned something. Did you I, did, I didn't know that didn't either until yeah. he said that. Did I you? said, wow. And I then guess you, you started really looking. Felt, yeah, you started thinking about it. And when you start it, looking, yeah. when you peel it, yeah, it's each you one can is see tinged. that each one goes to But I also learned from Dave Teeter, which was funny. I saw on the internet, I don't know if you all saw it, some woman got like a million downloads claiming that that um, stores were selling celery and, and lettuce and stuff that, ha- that was – had plastic on it, and she, she, she showed it by by heating it up and and pulling off this this stuff, 
And I'm sitting there saying, no. that's the membrane. That's the membrane. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but there was a million people that believed her. Really? It's the membrane that, that comes with it. It's like our skin. It's what comes with it. It's, it's not plastic. I'm sitting there saying, I, it's amazing. <laughs> it's amazing. A million what, hits, no a less. A million, yes. People saying, that's disgusting. Huh? No, it's membrane. <laughs> wow. That goes with the corn silk. I'm it telling does. you. It does, same thing. People just wow. don't know. All right, well, no, anyways. Uh, well, that's good news. So the Cider Shack is open uh, each and every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday yep. uh, from 4 to 8. It's a uh, newly created uh, <clears throat> venue over at Mackerel Organic Farm. And while you're there... Take a walk around inside the store and uh, check out some of the great organic <laughs> vegetables and and uh, oh the meats and everything. Meats, like that, everything is all organic meat, and they uh, they, they have a kitchen there that they, uh, Wade uh, is doing a, a tremendous job with the food there. It you really get, is. You can get stuff fresh there. You can get stuff frozen there, which is un- unbelievable. Flash frozen, but it's it really is pretty amazing. It really is pretty amazing. All, all right, right, so uh, we'll follow up with that interview this week, and then. Uh, can push them a little bit more because right. I've got to get over there. I like hard cider. I'm gonna no, have to, I'm going to have to. I'm going to have to go over and try it. Except I'm, I'm shocked. Four o'clock. Four o'clock in the afternoon is pushing the envelope. I, I'm shocked. That's why they need to open a little earlier. You know, they used uh, to. They used to make cider at my house. You know that. My grandmother used yeah, to make. No, cider. Everybody yeah. used to yeah. make. My grandmother cider. used to make hard cider. Did. And yeah. she, matter of fact, she used to make hard crab apple cider. Really. And that was. Boy, I never tried mm. that. Oh, I tell you. <laughs> wow. We used to always s- s- sneak it, and then we'd start putting water in it, and then finally it was down to nothing. <laughs> <laughs> My grandmother would always know, though, because <laughs> <laughs> we'd drink it, and we'd put water in it, and like, thinking that, who would know? <laughs> yeah, why would you need to do that? <laughs> well, to make, to make it look false, like no one was to, going in on it. They you were kids. They the weren't supposed to be drinking alcohol, oh. Paul. Oh, there was alcohol in it. Yeah, that's what hard cider that's what hard is. Cider. Oh, yeah. I oh, think hard cider is, is like 6% or something. Yeah. It's, it's like, like one of your high-end beers. We used to do that with my, with my father's vodka, and he would go crazy because he knew the, you know, the vodka drinker. You know, <laughs> he, he, he just didn't drink vodka. He drank vodka. <laughs> leave it so, long, leave so, it long yeah. enough, it becomes brandy. Yeah, there <laughs> right, you go. Basically, yeah. <laughs> I've been drinking uh, hard cider all these years. I just thought it vinegar. felt well. And you said, and I you just s- felt kind of a warm feeling from it. I thought it was yeah. like, oh. So you didn't know. I didn't you know. spilled it. That's why. That's I've right. been telling people I've right. been a teetotaler all these years. <clears throat> yeah. Well, right. we well, we got to the bottom of that. Well, I, took, yeah, I, guess I, I took Willie's time up again. That's all right. <laughs> Willie, I'm sure he's waiting. <laughs> in the wings. He's chomping at the bit. All right. Well, Hi, once guys. again, uh, thank you, Marshall. You're listening to Hometown Sunday Morning here on uh, Robin Hood Radio. Uh, I don't know if the milkmaid's going to call in today. I know they had the, uh, the junior and the senior show over at uh, Dutchess County Fair. It's the 173rd annual uh, fair being held over there. It ends today. runs from uh, uh, 9 o'clock this morning until <clears throat> 11 o'clock tonight, as uh, we said earlier. Uh, just a great country-style uh, fair that uh, is fun for the whole family. A lot of farm animals, a lot of uh, different things to do. So uh, that goes on today. And uh, don't forget the pancake breakfast down there at the Wasake Firehouse. The uh, ladies' auxiliary do a tremendous job with their breakfast. And they also have a, um, a bake sale that goes along with that. So uh, that's pretty cool. And if you uh, <clears throat> would like to uh, go to uh, one of the, one of the uh, better outstanding uh, clam bakes in the, in the area, uh, it rivals uh, the one at the Canaan VFW. Uh, the Sons of the American Legion Post 178 are uh, putting on a clam bake on September 30th. So keep all those things in mind. And uh, once again, we hope you uh, enjoy the rest of today's show. As always, we start out with a troop tribute, and uh, we're going to pass that off to uh, Larry the Patriot, who is uh, going to take us through this week's uh, edition. Good morning, hometown listeners. Before beginning, I wish to express a farewell salute to military warrior, super patriot, veteran advocate, and U.S. Senator John McCain, a man who sacrificed a great deal for his country above and beyond the call of duty, the rare politician who always put his country first. Farewell, Senator McCain. God walk with you. You will be remembered. Last week, we covered our second and a third part 
series on Vietnam and those who served. Our first segment involved the war and its effects upon those involved. Our second covered a sequential series of major events of that era. Today's third and final segment involves a respectful legacy of those who served and will culminate with a fitting coming full circle finale. Let's get to it. For an American visiting the Vietnam Veterans Memorial Wall on the National Mall in Washington, D.C., can be one of the most powerful and emotional ways to honor the more than 58,000 Americans who gave their lives in service to our country. For Vietnam era veterans, a visit can prov provide closure and reinforce the importance of their sacrifice. Many monuments and memorials exist around the country honoring those Vietnam veterans who were killed, along with the Vietnam Wall in DC that is the main anchor for honoring those Vietnam veterans who made the ultimate sacrifice, said Bob Babcott, rifle platoon leader in Vietnam. Since the wall officially opened in November of 82, people have left tributes there to honor veterans such as dog tags, medals, and other special remembrances. Some people leave more, the cremated remains of veterans. As the age of the remaining population of Vietnam veterans increases, so has the leave, leaving of cremains. This January, the National Park Service erected signs, the scattering of human remains is prohibited anywhere in the National Mall, including at the Vietnam Veterans Memorial. Human remains and so associated objects should not be left at the memorial and will not not become part of the museum collection. The National Park Service has collected more than 400,000 objects left at the wall from sonograms and international flags to military regalia, wedding rings to teddy bears, and even a motorcycle. These mementos are curated to form the Vietnam Veterans Memorial Collection which provides context for a better understanding of the many aspects of v the Vietnam War and its veterans. Veterans or their families seeking a final resting place to honor a loved one are encouraged to contact the National Cemetery Administration at VA, it's cemeteryva.gov, the federal agency specifically charged with honoring the America's veterans and their sacrifice to their nation. The war was complicated, but the legacy of Vietnam veterans shouldn't be. Most Vietnam veterans participated in the Vietnam War because we felt it was our duty and our responsibility. Just as others before us, we who did what our country asked us to do in Vietnam simply did our part to pay the price for living in this great country that many before us fought to create and preserve. Too many people today take our freedoms for granted and don't personally know anything, anyone in the military. We who answered our country's call during the Vietnam War can hold our heads high that we did what all Americans should be willing to do when called upon. Those who were draft dodgers probably have regrets in their private moments that they shirked the responsibility back when they were young men. I did my duty, made lifelong, lifelong friends, learned lessons that have served me well all my life, have a strong patriotic sense of responsibility to our country and its defense against all enemies, foreign and domestic. And am better, am better man because I served. I made more important decisions as a 23-year-old rifle platoon leader than I ever made in the 34 years as an IBM executive, Babcock said. Those who served in Vietnam 
have long been the nation's largest group of veterans, numbering 6.7 million in 2016, according to the U.S. Census. Now in their late 60s to 80s, these veterans are experiencing the normal maladies associated with aging, and many are dying at a face faster rate because of Agent Orange. It's tragic, just like World War II in Korea veterans. It's now Vietnam veterans' time said Paul Pelosa, president of Vietnam Veterans America. Veterans who returned home from Vietnam and later died as a result of their service are often not eligible for inclusion on the wall. When the wall was built in 82, no one knew that veterans were going to continue dying from Vietnam-related causes, said Heidi Zimmerman, spokesman for Vietnam Veterans Memorial Fund. Veterans added to in memory are honored each year on Father's Day with a ceremony. Last year, more than 400 veterans were honored by almost 2,000 family members and friends in attendance. Each honoree's name is said aloud either by a family member or a volunteer. Previous honorees' families are invited to attend. They describe it as a very healing to be around their, the other families who have been through very similar experiences. And memory costs nothing to the family members, applicant, and it really does help families with healing and closure, Zimmerman said. Vietnam touched a big part of the population, just about everybody. When you start to record you begin to see the diversity of stories and experiences of veterans, protesters, families. No single veteran's perspective is the same, but most express, express pride in their service. Oral histories by veterans give others who weren't present or even alive a powerful sense of what it means to serve. It's rare to understand the higher sacrifice made by veterans. There's no comparison to learning about war from an individual's perspective to understand it. Movies made about Vietnam or the way it's viewed in popular culture really focus on the individual, but rather the horror and carnage of war. Veterans have stories to share, and many times wives or families haven't heard them. Like the World War II and Korean veterans, these stories are disappearing. For the boots on the ground, now is the time to share their stories. It is the 50th anniversary of the year in the war, 1968, where we suffered the most casualties, had the most victories. It is important now than ever for we Vietnam veterans to tell our stories, those of us who lived and fought the war in Vietnam, rather than let someone else tell the story for us. Veterans of all wars seek health care in Veterans Administration hospitals, and there may, may be one near your community. Go visit the guys laid in those beds. Every, everyone goes at Christmas or other holidays. Do it another time. Bring small gifts like toiletries, razors, combs, magazines, or candy bars. A visit can make a very, very big difference in someone's life and is a great way to teach young people. There are a lot of little things you can do, like bring veterans to, the, to, the, to a hospital, and you're familiar with that, David. Mm -hmm. Help is needed in all departments, and your assistance, assistance frees up staff for more important work, he said. In Amer if America is going to be the world's policeman, we better make sure we take care of our veterans when they return from service. Both Babcat, Bobcat and Pelozo agreed that schools don't do enough to teach American history and the Vietnam experience. The one exception that you and I have found, David, is uh, Pine Plains Central School. Yeah, they do an outstanding job. They, well, they have a regular class yeah. on uh, uh, military history, history. Military history. Yeah, that, that's quite a uh, that's quite a story in that's, itself. That's unique. I mean, yeah. no, it's, it's unheard of. No, and, no and, this know, guy's they, terrific. Yeah. 
and they the students teach. are inspired by it. Well, so and, it's, and the students that want to take this particular <laughs> class are interested in military history, and it's just it's a phenomenal course. Okay. They don't do enough to teach American history and Vietnam experience, how and why the war was fought and the decisions that were made to children. That's why veterans have a duty to speak up. I think Vietnam veterans owe it to themselves, their family, their unit, and to American history to be willing to tell the story about their experiences in Vietnam. By many veterans doing that, regardless of what their job was, all of them were important, even if some veterans think they didn't have an important job. The American public can learn more about this war. Now, a f fitting s summary to this, our third part segment of the Vietnam era. Contemporary human experience can mitigate past tragedy. U.S. Navy Commander Hein Trine is part of the crew of the U.S. S carrier Carl Vincent. His family fled Vietnam in a tiny fishing vessel after the fall of Saigon in 75, a U.S. Navy ship rescued the family, which inspired Commander Trin to join our military. He manages the dental facility on that ship today. The fruits of decades of effort to build bilateral trust is how U.S. Ambassador to Vietnam Dan Crittenbrink Critten, Critten describes the dramatic visit of our aircraft carrier, the USS Carl Vinson, to that country. The magnificent U.S. Navy vessel is a mission of peace, serving as a symbol of steadily expanding cooperation between two nations once at war. The Vietnam War was for the U.S. literally the most divisive since our Civil War. Intense controversy led in American domestic life to f physical violence as well as emotional and political turbulence during the chaotic 60s. The destruction visited upon the Vietnamese, Cambo Cambodians, and La Laotian people was vast. Cost of the war resonate in human terms in both Southeast Asia and the United States. Contemporary human experience can mitigate past tragedy. USS Navy Commander Hein Trine is part of the crew of the Carl Vinson. His family fled Vietnam in a tiny fishing vessel after the fall of Saigon in 75. A U.S. Navy ship rescued his family, which inspired Commander Trun to join our military. He manages the dental facilities, as I said previously. And the the cost of that being Saigon being overrun is, is is horrific. It's estimated that four million Vietnam Southern Vietnamese died from uh, North Vietnamese incursion and from Cambodia. You remember Pol 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 Pot? Yeah, Pol Pot from Cambodia. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The killing fields of Cambodia. Yeah. Probably over a million of those died trying to swim the Mekong Delta or out to sea in the Navy and the little boats like Commander Trin and his family. Current improvement in relations with Vietnam reflect concerns about the assertiveness of China, including military expansion. Beijing and Hanoi have serious disagreements about maritime jurisdictions. Both Presidents Bush contributed to the cooperation Viet with Vietnam. President George H.W. and Secretary of State James Baker deserve credit for supporting APEC, Asian Pacific Economic Cooperation. Australian Prime Minister Bob Hawke conceived the organization and hosted the first summit in '89. The formation of APEX complemented and reinforced other strategic achievements of this Bush administration. 
Bush, Baker, and Associates skillfully maneuvered through the collapse of the Soviet war and end of the Cold War. And I must say at this point that Senator McCain was a big part of this as well. The administration of President George Bush supported the 206 APEC summit held in Hanoi, the capital of Vietnam. That gathering provided a useful opportunity to highlight that nation's economic growth and wider commitment to mu multilateralism. Defense Secretary Donald Rumsfeld, Rumsfeld was warmly welcomed in Vietnam with a special parade in his honor, which included playing the U.S. National Anthem. For years after Hanoi 1975's military victory, the newly unified nation was frustrated by inability inability to, to turn military and political uh, resuscitation of North Asian nations until 95, nearly three decades after the creation of the Regional Development Organization. T the 206 Summit was a mar remarkable, remarkable substantive and symbolic success. There was strong commitment and multilateralism and vital importance of working with allies through the established regional and global institutions. What, what this all boils down to is that uh, now Vietnam is uh, a docile place with which we are friendly and uh, we do a lot of business with them. Partners in this Asian organization have proven willing to expand the reach to include cooperation with expli explicitly military dimensions. This complements U.S. treaties with Australia, Japan, and South Korea. For decades, the Cold War defined relationships among nations. Today, economic realities undermine ideology. Conclusion. Thank you, folks, for sharing this historical past with me, one in which I was personally involved, a history I hope taught us lessons which will forge and better our country and its future. Many mistakes were made. The best and the worst of human nature prevailed. Despite a person's personal promising military career, I chose to retire due to the existing turmoil of that era. As I have previously voiced on this program, any retired veteran should leave a written or recorded legacy of their service, at least the events appropriate to share. Your story is important, a proper legacy to family, friends, and to military history. Thank you, Lakeland Tom Gum, for sharing this important Vietnam ledger with me and in turn our veteran tribute listeners. God bless our military, our veterans, those supporting us foreign and domestically, and of course, you faithful listeners and your families. Back to NASCAR. That was a good, uh, good little lesson for everyone, I think, and um, <clears throat> well done with uh, making sure you uh, take a little bit of time and go see these uh, veterans and talk to them, um, even if they're uh, in their homes. You don't necessarily have to go to a, a facility to. Uh, to see them, but <coughs> any little um, any little time spent is uh, well spent. So that being said, we always start out with a couple of tribute songs, and uh, this goes out to all those veterans, both um, past and present, who uh, keep us safe each and every day so that we can uh, enjoy our freedom here in the United States. <laughs> Dear son, it's almost June I hope this letter catches up with you And finds you well It's been dry, but they're calling for rain And everything's the same old same Johnsonville Your stubborn old daddy ain't said too much but I'm sure you know he sends his love And she goes on In a letter from home 
I hold it up and show my buddies like we ain't scared and our boots ain't muddy and they all laugh like there's something funny about the way I talk. When I say mama sends her best y'all. I fold it up and put it in my shirt. Pick up my gun and get back to work. And it keeps me driving on. Waiting on letters from home. My dearest love, it's almost dawn. I've been lying here all night long, wondering where you might be. I saw your mama and I showed her the ring. Man on a television said something, so I couldn't sleep. But I'll be all right. I'm just missing you. This is me kissing you, X's and O, in a letter from home. I hold it up and show my buddies like we ain't scared and our boots ain't muddy and they all laugh 'cause she calls me honey, but they take it hard 'cause I don't read the good part. Fold it up and put it in my shirt. Pick up my gun and get back to work. And it keeps me driving on, waiting on letters from home. Dear son, I know I ain't written. Sitting here tonight alone in the kitchen, it occurs to me I might not have said so. I'll say it now, son. You make me proud. I hold it up and show my buddies like we ain't scared and our boots ain't muddy, but no one laughs. Cause there ain't nothing funny when a soldier cries, and I just wipe my eyes. I fold it up and put it in my shirt. Pick up my gun and get back to work. And it keeps me driving on, waiting. Letters from home.
Monday. That was Brooks and Dunn with John Michael Montgomery. Before that, let's take a quick look at the weather. Uh, sunny to partly cloudy today. A stray shower or thunderstorm is possible, a high of 81. Tonight, partly cloudy skies, a low of 64. Tomorrow, partly cloudy, a high of 87. You're listening to Hometown Sunday Morning on Robin Hood Radio. I'm Chad Wildy. Patriot Larry. Farmer Paul. I'm NASCAR Day. Welcome back. And um, <clears throat> that's a cool tune by uh, Brooks and Dunn. Only in America. Do whatever you want to do because we're free. Because all these veterans. Uh, so that being said, I guess we have, uh, you know what? So this is what I, <laughs> Pat- this is what yeah. I did. This is what I've been doing the last two days. Patriot. Hellahan. I uh, <laughs> I deliver papers, and there's one particular <laughs> store that I set the papers at. Well, inevitably, if you look at any paper store uh-huh. where you buy your local newspapers, yeah. the uh-huh. New York Times is always predominantly on top of the rack. Well, because it's the most because expensive and it's the biggest. And because it's everybody that Not reads anymore. it is... Um, <laughs> Oh, you mean the type of people? Right. The bon ton of Salisbury? Yeah, yeah. That, well, that no, that that of any town. It doesn't well, make any difference where it does. The, the upper, Times is sold. The upper crust. The upper crust. Well, okay, okay, so. That's right. I've been putting the New York Times on the bottom. Oh, boy, you're, <clears throat> okay? you're a revolutionary. And I'm putting the New York Post on top. And then I put the Daily News. And for the life of me, I don't know why anybody would read the Wall Street Journal on Sunday, but that's still Do above... They, do they even publish on Sunday? It's one of them. Really? Oh, yeah. So know. anyway, the uh, so now s- that we know that Willie, so to get back to this story, so see, I like to switch things up. Uh-huh. So see, <laughs> he are. religiously calls just right after we get done the tribute and the songs. Yes. So maybe we should put Willie like at the bottom of the rack this week. Oh. Like have no. him call in at eleven fifteen. No, no, no. I, I want to go get some he's corn. He's a patriot. So he goes. Oh, you want another? You yeah, want another tribute. two years yeah, of corn? Yeah. All right. Well, uh, I will tell you what we're going to do though. We are going to hold him off until the top of the hour. We're going to play another tune here on Hometown <laughs> Sunday Morning. Do you think he can wait? And he's going to have to wait. And David, uh, 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 my son used to put papers together years ago for the New York Times. Yeah. Like two hundred papers. Oh yeah. Now. This uh, distributor is down to about ten, so you you don't have a lot to lift these days. No, but they do sell quite a few. Yeah, they sell. Believe quite me, a few. they sell yeah. quite a few. Yeah. Not like the I old days. I can tell you, in Lakeville and Salisbury alone, they get probably three hundred <laughs> three hundred copies. I believe it. They well, do. Yeah, because yeah. we deliver. Them. People don't. All right. Like well, that being said, we're going to play a quick <laughs> tune. Go to the top of the hour, and then we can uh, have Fully's Willie's full attention uh, at the top of the hour. You hang on, Willie. We'll be right back. What, what Alan Jackson, she's got the rhythm. This old bar stool's feeling high as I started sinking low. The minute that she walked right through that door. Not long ago I held her like a fool I went and left her. Now she's with somebody new out on that floor And she's got the rhythm And I got the blues And she's showing me how much I had to lose With her every little move She's telling me I'm over you She's got the rhythm And I got the blues Even faster, and she spells out regret in perfect time. Well, I thought I wanted freedom, but that ball and chain, I need them. When you choose, sometimes you lose the pride. Cause she's got the rhythm, and I got the blues, and she's showing me how much I had to lose. Telling me I'm over you She's got the rhythm And I got the blues Yeah, with her every little move She's telling me I'm over you She's got the rhythm And 
And I got the Robin Hood Radio is WHDD AM and FM Sharon, WBSL FM Sheffield, and WLHV FM Annandale on Hudson. The smallest NPR station in the nation. The auxiliary of the Wissaic Fire Company is still having their breakfast for another hour. Head on down there. The menu is complete with pancakes, French toast, eggs any style, bacon, sausage, hash browns, toast juice, and coffee. Prices are $8 for adults, $7 for seniors, and $5 for children age 9 and under. We're talking about the Wissaic Firehouse on 23 Firehouse Road. You're listening to Hometown Sunday Morning on Robin Hood Radio. I'm Chad Wildy. Patriot Larry. <laughs> Farmer Paul. <laughs> I'm corn, NASCAR corn Dave. Corn Paul. you got to eat So <laughs> what? what is the purpose He's of always got eating corn a cups. corn that Larry so graciously cooked and then For come in, in here? Us. You ate it in the other room and you bring the cob in here on the plate. What is that about? Because, uh, because I'm about to go throw it away outside. I don't want to throw it away in here. All right, good morning. You're live on Hometown Sunday Morning. Good morning, Dave. It's Willie. Well, sorry we had to put you at the bottom of the rack this morning, Oh, that's morning, all Willie. right. That's okay. I don't mind. I'm, I'm, I'm glad sur- to get on. I'm sure that you're one of those guys that when you walk in on the run or uh, the pharmacy or, or Le Bon's, you reach right for that, right on top of the rack, the New York Times, every Sunday. Uh, no, actually, I don't. I read it. I, I read it. I do read it online, but I, I get the Waterbury Republican every day, and of course read the Lakeville Journal every week. But uh, okay, yeah, yeah. just checking. Yeah, you, know, hey, you gotta you gotta try different publications. You know, try to get find some balance in the news. That's true. Some there, truth. Paul, uh, Larry, you should. Li- Did you hear what the man just yeah, said? Balance. You need to get some balance. I learned that the, the New York Times is not balanced about twelve years ago. So. <laughs> All right, so. <laughs> I don't know what what you've got going on this week for fundraisers, but I'll tell you what it's a it's a pretty busy week come leading up to uh, Labor Day. It is. Uh, I don't have a, a in its aggregate. Uh, I got so much to talk about. I, I could have gotten on at nine this morning and taken you to noon myself. There's so much. Uh, not really? so much. Not so much coming up this week because uh, any fundraising events probably uh, put off. Uh, 
their events because of the holiday weekend. But um, the uh, today, uh, if someone wanted to go, they still could. The uh, Walk in the Woods for Parkinson's is happening over in Litchfield at the White Memorial uh, Conservation Center. It's a beautiful facility over there. Um, uh, last year, they I think 300 people raised $20,000 for for Parkinson's. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's one. It's you know. It's one of those horrific diseases. You know, it's like Alzheimer's and ALS. There, there's no cure. It's the, it it uh, takes more and more away from you, and um, it adds burden, more and more burdens to the family members, caregivers, and so uh, what they do is they divide their proceeds fifty uh, fifty with the Michael J. Fox Foundation, which is a research organization, and the other half goes to uh, Torrington Parkinson Support Group, which is a local group that uh, gives support to both the, the sufferers of the disease and their families because God knows they need the support. No, absolutely. And, you know, more and more, you know, when Michael J. Fox was diagnosed with it, uh, then it, he brought, he was able to, because of his fame, he was able to bring it to the forefront. Yeah. But he put his he put his money where his mouth is, and uh, not only is he battling it, but he's also trying to find a cure for others yeah it's, uh, it's hugely well funded i mean they they yeah. spend hundreds of millions of dollars and and he and, and personally he how brave was it uh when he first started to show the the effects of it he could have just called it a career he would have been very well uh taken care of with his, the money he made in his career and just gone into obscurity but he he did the opposite to put a face on the disease he he, and he still does. He still he still acts and uh, plays a part of someone with that disease, and, and that's a pretty brave thing when you think about it. No, absolutely. And you know who else was just recently diagnosed with Parkinson's was uh, Neil Diamond. Oh yeah. Yeah, and yeah. he he uh, he retired from from uh, doing concerts because of the Parkinson's, but now <clears throat> uh, I guess with whatever treatment he's doing, because there's a lot of different ones that they do. Um, He's talking about coming back and maybe doing <clears throat> uh, another concert, uh, maybe not a, a three or four hour thing, uh, but he may he may try it again. He's he's uh, really considering it. And I just when you get famous people like like that uh, showing that their courage, <clears throat> it just inspires people to give. Uh, so that someday they will find a cure yeah, for it. Yeah, Alan Alda, I think, was uh, diagnosed recently with the same disease. Yeah, no, it's uh, just uh, yeah. it's it's insane. Yeah, and like so many others, we we all know somebody who knows somebody at least who has it. So it, it's the disease. None of these diseases are too far away from us personally. And uh, um, you know, although part of uh, why I, I promote these events is not necessarily that you can participate in them. You know, maybe you don't want to go to Litchfield to, to participate in this walk, although I'm, they're very moving. To I've, I've witnessed enough of them. They're they're very moving events. You know, these people all, uh, hundreds of them, all there for the same purpose. Either they've got family members or friends, uh, and uh, they've raised money. Uh, but uh, just knowing about it, learning a little bit about it, you may be uh, motivated to to send a, a check of ten, twenty dollars to to help it all out. It, it's we're all in this together. All these diseases. I mean, there's there's no lack. There's no lack of causes, very worthy causes, but uh, some resonate with us more than others, and, and somehow it all works out. Everybody gets funded, but there's uh, there's always room for more. Oh, yeah, no, absolutely. And that's a, they raise, a, like you said, it, it, they raise a ton of money, and it goes to uh, two, good, two good organizations, yeah, really. Yeah, yeah. Um, <clears throat> this week, this coming week and this weekend, like I said, there's virtually nothing because of the holiday, but Thursday, of course, <clears throat> as you mentioned earlier, uh, is, is the vintage race car parade. Uh, that's Thursday. It's it's it wends its way through Salisbury and Lakeville and ends up in Falls Village. Uh, we uh, directors of SWAS will be parking the cars, and then there's a nice gathering of of uh, uh, businesses on the green and uh, things to eat and drink, and people come and watch the cars. There's over a hundred of them. They they all pull in. We park them in about ten minutes, and then they're there for everyone to see. Uh, they're they're extraordinary pieces of machinery and if you've never been before you should you should definitely come um and uh, get an interview with you dave on the front porch <laughs> <laughs> um anyway that's pretty much it for the weekend but then the following we- weekend all hell breaks loose i guess because uh it was such a light week uh, there there's well, i guess there's eight or nine events the following weekend there's uh 
uh, Boys and Girls Club golf tournament up in Fit- Pittsfield. Uh, Fairview Hospital has a golf tournament. These are during the week. Um, and then by the following weekend, we're talking the 7th, 8th, and 9th, um, there's an interesting uh, uh, event over in Poughkeepsie on uh, Friday the 7th. It's called the uh, Think Differently Dash. It's put on by a group called First Friday. And they, they came about, and I, I can see where other other towns and municipalities could could benefit from this knowledge. The First Friday was organized uh, for the purpose of finding ways to keep the 600-odd city municipal workers uh, in town for Friday evening. They get out of work on Friday afternoon, and uh, they all go to their various homes, but they're looking for ways to you know, have interesting things for them to do to keep them in town, visit the restaurants and so forth. They had um, musical events, and anyway, there's a, a, a walk run coming up Friday the 7th for that for that purpose. So it's, it's kind of cool. It's just a way to foster um, community interest and, uh, you know, uh, shop locally and all that, and, uh, kind of a cool thing. Nice. Um, then next, uh, this, I'm saying next, to two Saturdays from now, the 8th, uh, there are two golf tournaments, very worthy ones, the Amenia Fire Company Golf Tournament over at Under Mountain, um, and also the Kara Zinke Emergency Fund Golf Tournament will be at the Canaan Country Club. Uh, the Amenia Fire Company, of course, is raising money for their uh, for their programs. And uh, the Kara Zinke, Kara Zinke is, in, uh, if you saw my blog last week, I, I put down and listed all the names, one after another, of all the events that I write up that are memorial events. In other words, there's someone who's, some of them were. Some of them lived long lives, and uh, you know the history of their lives inspired people to remember them and, and start events in their name. Others lost their lives as, as very young people, but still um, inspired the same action in people. And I think I've got 35 or 40 names, uh, oh, wow. um, and Kara Zinke is one of them. She she uh, was well known, well liked in Canaan. Lost her life at, at a young age, and um, because the community. Uh, was so responsive to her family uh, after that tragedy, both uh, emotional support and financial, that uh, they started this tournament to sort of pay it forward. Uh, and they have an emergency fund, uh, the proceeds of which go to uh, families uh, who are in a similar situation. So it's that's very, very worthy. Um, and then on the 9th, that's the Sunday of that weekend, there's this thing coming up. I could probably spend an hour talking about this one event because it's it spans uh, four weekends. It's the Upper Housatonic Heritage Area uh, uh, event. It's it's Saturday uh, and Sunday uh, of four consecutive September weekends. They they have 63 events that span those four weekends. Uh, they're free, um, uh, and each each venue has an expert there to to guide people through it and the who's uh, dan bolignani is the head of that i don't know if you remember dan he he uh uh was at the interlaken end for years doing their marketing and he's the head of the western connecticut and uh convention and visitors bureau uh and he's also now the head of the the upper housatana heritage area it's a federal program and their mission is to expose all the cultural and natural and historic things that are going on in Massachusetts and in Litchfield County in Connecticut and the way they do that every year. This is the seventh, This is what's remarkable to me. This will be the 17th year they've done that. Hmm. Uh, uh, largely, it's unknown. I mean, I mean, they get, they get roughly 1,200 people a year who about 25 people per event, uh, and yet the, you ask the average person, they've never heard of it. But um, they, they do, uh, well, that, that first weekend uh, they have... Uh, uh, a walk around the Housat- along the Housatonic River up in Massachusetts with an eye towards the uh, the industrial history that took place along the Housatonic River. Uh, there's a tour of the Pittsfield Colonial Theater, which is far more historic than I realize. It's, it was built around ni- 1900. Uh, there's a Bidwell House uh, um, um, uh, and other uh, Buildings like uh, the, the Bidwell House apparently was one of the earliest buildings in like the Monterey area. The earliest settlers built built it. Uh, the Hancock Shaker Trail, the uh, October Mountain State Forest, Boulder Train. Uh, apparently, there's a string of giant boulders uh, in a, in a row up around the Richmond Mass area, 
and uh, they're, they're, they're far different than the rest of the geography. And uh, apparently, it's, I, I'd never heard of it before, but uh, they give a tour of that. Sharon Art uh, Trail in, in Sharon, Connecticut. There are nature preserves. Uh, and there's a bike ride in Stockbridge. This is all the first weekend. And then the next three consecutive weekends, there, there, are, there are 15, 20 events each weekend. But it's the, the, the ambition of putting this together just staggers my imagination. Yeah, anybody who's been involved in putting on anything, a, a single event, you know how you know all the moving parts and it uh, you know, involves people and all this kind of stuff. Well, there's 63 events spread over four weekends, and they do it every year, and it's free. Uh, and um, the reason I put it on my site is because there's a bicycle ride, there's a, a canoe paddle one of the weekends, and many of the uh, natural visits are hikes of one to four miles. So that kind of falls under, you know, my definition of, of what I do. Uh, it, it's, it's not a fundraiser because it's free, but it does give exposure to all these great events that we have in our our area that we might not even know about yeah i never heard i've never heard of this well um you, you can go to go to my website and uh and through that you can find out what's going on and you can find out more about the um upper who's uh who's tonic heritage area uh i have their website on my website and and it's uh very worthwhile i talked to dan about it and he said their goal is not only to expose people to these things but to maybe motivate them to become involved in their preservation because whether it's a building or a, a, a preserve or whatever it is, it, they all need to be taken care of, and uh, and we can all participate in that, and that's one of his goals. And um, uh, Anyway, it, it's certainly worth worth discussion discussing, and probably in the next three weeks I'll mention it again because wow. it's, gonna, it's going right through the end of uh, September. Um, also, on uh, this is, would be on Sunday. To, to the, that's... Uh, the heritage walks are, are Saturday and Sunday um, of the, the uh, 8th and 9th. Also on the 9th up in uh, Pittsfield is the Woofstock Walk. This is put on by Berkshire Humane, and it's a, a walk you can do with your pet dog. And they raise money for the Berkshire Humane as part of there's a festival sort of afterwards. And uh, it reminds me of the, uh, the little guilds uh, uh, run and wag that they have in Cornwall. That will be in October. But uh, two very worthy events, two very worthy causes, and they're fun to watch. The, there's a video on the, front, on the home page of my uh, website that I've left there for the whole year. Just, it's just fun to watch. It's, it's the start of the run and wag last year with the people with their pets. And you know, the, hear the dogs barking and their, their pets large and small. There are people large and small. It's just, it's just a fun, like, 30-second uh, video. But uh, it, it, it kind of captures the, the event, and they raise a lot of money. Um, also, that same day, that Sunday, uh, High Watch uh, Center Sprint for Recovery. Um, it's a 5K down in Kent. Uh, proceeds help uh, fund uh, for people who are, who are going into rehab and they don't have the money. Uh, it, it helps with the costs for them. Um, and there's a Sparrow's Nest 5K over in uh, Pleasant Valley on that same day. So there were, um, and that's raising money for feeding uh, children uh, with cancer. I mean, it's just another one of those heartbreaking but necessary uh, uh, charities that uh, uh, we have all over the place, and thank God we do. So I don't, I don't know, I didn't add them up, but there's like eight or nine things going on that, that weekend after Labor Day weekend. Yeah, I think I think once we get through next weekend with Labor Day, like you said, everybody basically takes a break because of the three-day holiday because a lot yeah. of people are out of town and yeah, yeah. Uh, this and that and the other thing. But <clears throat> um, it really is going to ramp up, uh, like you say, starting the 8th and 9th of September, and that'll go right through uh, the first part of November probably. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Usually that November the golf tournaments pretty much wind down because it's getting a little cold and uh Running, although running slows down, it never really stops. You think of running as being a, a relatively decent weather sport, but uh, I think I have three races on New Year's Day alone. And uh, <laughs> even Norfolk in the dead of winter has a race. Uh, what, what are they thinking? I don't know. But uh, yeah, racing, pretty much running, takes place all year round. Yeah, and that's a good thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is. It is. Now the other thing I wanted to touch on and. It's because Larry's asked me the last two weeks. He was wondering about the whole Samaritan law. Well, hold on, hold on. Wait a bit, Larry. Larry. Larry's not here. Okay, well, he, he doesn't have to be because actually it pertains more to Paul. I'm sorry. Oh, this is Paul. Well, I'm going to have to enlist him. 
And I'll uh, tell you Larry's why. Larry's come back. So Hold I'm... on. Larry's just putting his headphones on. Okay. Because, okay. you know, when Larry asks a question the previous week, he should at least pay attention because okay. we cool. knew that you would come back with the answer. <laughs> Not the previous weeks. Well, anyway, uh, last week and the week before, Larry asked about the Good Samaritan Law. And as it pertained to this uh CPR light I've been talking about Correct. several times. People people can learn very quickly how to provide basic CPR to someone who needs it. Uh, Larry asks, well, uh, yeah, what's our what's our liability in cases like that? And there is a Good Samaritan law, and I I it, I actually probably raise more questions than I answer, and, and I'll tell you why in a minute. Um, the Good Samaritan laws uh, go by state. Each state has their own. It's not a federal law. And they were meant originally to protect uh, professionals, medical professionals, doctors, EMTs, nurses, and so forth from liability when they're trying to help somebody in an accident situation. And over time, it came to, um, to encompass everybody, uh, the non-professional, the layman, the, the people like you and me who have no training and you come upon someone in need and... Um, um, and the laws were expanded to try to give them, those people, those good Samaritans, some protection if they tried to help and something went wrong. And what I found, well, in my research, I found, I've got some information that I find helpful, but it's, it's all information that was distilled by others. As soon as I started trying, trying to read the laws themselves, that's where I got bogged down. You know, I, I only had to, I only need to see too many wherefores and forthwiths and my eyes glaze over. And, and that's where I'm going to commission Paul to help us out. Maybe, maybe both in his research abilities and his understanding of the law. He's a lawyer. You know, these laws were written by lawyers, so only they can understand it. You know, no offense, Paul. But. <laughs> am I, am I wrong? Am I he wrong? did not stutter, Paul. No. <laughs> he said all this is written by lawyers because they're the only ones that can understand it. Yeah, because you're talking, you're talking garbage. Yeah. Well, okay? well, it can't be written the way you would like it to be written because there right. might be exceptions. It's got to be, it's got to be written like we're reading in the New York Times. Well, yeah, even exactly. though it's written you, probably got... precisely uh, to to so that there's no misunderstanding, it, it still <laughs> it still creates misunderstanding, no, and I'll and I'll tell you why in a minute. But the laws, basically, the laws throughout the states, and this is a very general statement. Uh, Basically, the laws protecting the Good Samaritan have two elements. And, and one uh, is if you do come upon a scene, the, the, the help you provide is done right there at that scene, not taking somebody someplace else or, or something like that. And the number two element is that you're doing it without uh, expectation of compensation or that you're going to get paid for it or anything. And, uh, the, 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 and the one exception, and this is where the gray area comes, is the exception to your protection is if there's gross negligence or willful misconduct as you're helping someone. Well, gross negligence, uh, there is no definition for that. Uh, I, I guess the general definition is that uh, it, the lack of gross general uh, gr gross negligence would be, would be where the, the average reasonable person, how they would conduct themselves. Um, but they never really define gross negligence. And who, who interprets that? Yeah, I mean, if, you, if you're performing CPR and it doesn't work, I mean, if you try to perform heart surgery with your pocket knife, I, I suppose that could be called gross negligence. But what else? I don't know. I don't know. But within that framework, See, they're, they're even... Gonna want, they're going to want you to look at all the circumstances surrounding that, the that's, that's That's true. What, that's and, what it comes down to. And when it comes to California, uh, you'll, you'll see uh -huh. that's the case. But to show you, just to give you an idea of how... The states vary in their interpretation of the law. Alabama protects uh, people, good Samaritans, only if uh, if the victim is in cardiac arrest. In other words, they're dead, you know, for all, you know, at least for the moment. Uh, that that then whatever you do to that person is pr protects you by the good Samaritan law in Alabama. Hmm. Every, everything else, if they're alive, they can sue you. Yeah, how would <laughs> how would the average layman know if it's the person's in cardiac arrest. 
Well, it, that, that's interesting, too, because when I took the, the, that little course where I learned it, I, I said, I, you know, I, I could just see myself coming upon a person lying there. I'm not going to be able to take their pulse because the only pulse I'm going to feel is my own, you know. And the guy said, well, you don't have to worry about that because even if someone's breathing and you can't feel it, they, you, you can't harm them by doing the, the, the chest compressions. Uh, but anyway, uh, in Alabama... If the victim is alive and you treat them, they can sue you. That's pretty much the way that law reads. Well, then the incentive is not to treat the victim. Well, the, yeah, which is which is contrary to what they. I mean, they wanted well, people to to treat people. I mean, they want whoever comes along. Now, now they're, Vermont. They're afraid though that somebody is going to treat them improperly and then they're going to die. Mm, right, but, but on the other hand, they're going to die anyways well, if you don't treat them. So if you're bleeding to death, a compress will do you wonders. Well, the, it doesn't even cover that. But <laughs> in uh, uh, Oklahoma, they added that whole uh, stem the bleeding clause. They're, they're basically the same as Alabama, but uh, in addition to the cardiac cardiac arrest, they allow a good Samaritan to try to st- stop bleeding, and it covers them for for a living person. Vermont is almost the complete opposite. They they have very strong protective laws for the Good Samaritan. And the reason they do that is because they require by law a Good Samaritan to help. If, you come, uh, if you're driving along and you see an accident, you're required by law to stop and help whatever way you can, whether you know doesn't, what you're doing or doesn't not. That, doesn't that seem a little bit too far the other way? It does. It does indeed. It does indeed. Because you could be held, is, is it civilly liable or criminally liable? I assume civilly. It's well, uh, if they sort of combine it because you're really? criminally re- you're. So it's criminal criminal negligence if you drive by somebody who's yes. on the side of the road. Yes. How do you even know what that person is? is it, I mean, that person could just be lying there on the side of the road. I go in Manhattan every day, and there are people lying on the sidewalks. Am I criminally liable for because those people may be dying? You should be. Well, the the law becomes interpreted. A perfect example of that is in California. There are Oh, it be, it be, well, a law. A, a, you think a law is a law, and you go, and you yeah. go by the law. But the law becomes interpretive. If there's a, a case that involves that law, then it, be, it becomes a test case, and then back, you know, back and forth. Anyway, in California, there was a case. They had they had a a, a fairly good, um, at least it seemed, good Samaritan law. And uh, one day, uh, a woman was driving by. She sees an accident. There's a there's a person in the car. Uh-huh. She stops. She is afraid that the car is going to catch on fire. She takes the, the person out of the car. Yeah. The 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 victim, the the, the crash victim, ends up paralyzed. Oh. Now, of course, in the course of the trial, I I can't imagine how long this dragged on. Well, there, there was a back and forth about when she the, the woman the the crash victim was a woman also. Uh, was she paralyzed in the crash, or was she paralyzed as she was taken out from the car? It goes back and forth. Anyway, the court decides in favor. She, so the, woman, the, the paralyzed woman sues the woman who took her, removed her from the car. Nice. The court uh, sides with the, the Good Samaritan. Mm-hmm. Uh, an appellate court overturns that. Good. And then the Supreme Court of California um, supports that. the appellate Oh, these, uh, uh, decision. So basically, opening up the, the the avenue for the victim to to sue the the Good Samaritan. Well, what it all hinged on was the wording of the the, the word medical, where it was used or not used, and uh, it it became quite the bone picking thing apparently. But it went on and on and on, and the way it ended up, they ended up uh, the, the the case read in terms of law was that a person can treat uh, a, a, a good Samaritan a good Samaritan can treat a person on site but they can't move them <laughs> now of course there are cases when when that's necessary like uh, they, they cite uh, uh, carbon monoxide poisoning yeah. for example and the person's in that room where the poisoning is taking place you, you know you you can't you can't uh, move the person out of that danger uh, without putting yourself at risk so they ended up having to rewrite all the laws and Cal- you know, those good Samaritan laws to try to you know, get rid of all that garbage. So anyway, uh, it's a long story, but it shows um, how interpretive things are. Now, I started to try to figure out what was going on in Connecticut, because that's, of course, germane to us, and I just didn't get very far. Uh, I I got bogged down in that legalese, and I said, you know what, I'm going to ask Paul to to figure it out. Uh, Um, I'll I'll give you my advice. If you see something like that, call a first responder. Call well, that's always the first thing you do. Yeah, yeah. yeah you call nine one one. Even you know when I took that course, the very first thing. Well, 
if, if there's more than one of you, you point at someone and yeah. said, you call 911 right. and you start doing it. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, because that's what they're, they're there for. Yeah. And that's their job. That's, and you're, you're, you're just taking a risk doing something that you don't know anything. You yeah. may not know very much about. But I would, I would like to know. I mean, uh, morally, morally is a different story. I mean, if you see someone morally, drowning. Morally, uh, and it should be allowed morally, but right. it's not. Yeah. You well, get the you get you get lawyers involved in it, or states. Uh, yeah. States interpretations. Some states are better than others. And yeah. Yeah. Some are really dismal. Yeah. yeah. Um, anyway, it would be nice to know in general what Connecticut's and because your Good radio luck. station and my website are tri-state, it would be uh, it would be interesting to know what the three states' uh, laws are. Um, uh, and again, I guess you don't you don't ever really have the satisfaction of feeling secure, no matter what you do, because so much is interpretive and what's n- gross negligence and and all that kind of stuff. But at least if we know in general terms what's going on, we can at least operate from that, and um, mm. you know we'd be better off. So well, uh, that's you know what I meant when I said I you know I I I, I probably brought up more questions than I answered. A lot of these lawsuits are driven by one of the parties' uh, insurance. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, sure. they're, they're playing back and forth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So deep pockets. And deep pockets. Well, I, I was right. in a situation like that one time, Willie. It was in a nearby town. I won't mention where. A van had overturned, and it was, it was starting to burn, and and the guy was unconscious inside, and a, 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 a black man pulled in a business suit, pulled up alongside of me. We went up and broke out the windshield, and pulled him out. Took him back about oh sixty feet or so, set him on the bank, and he was he was cut a little, and we we uh, we compressed that and so forth. And ambulance and the cops were on the way. I got in my car and left. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Well, that is kind of like the same situation. He was cut a little way. What happens if you hadn't compressed the bleeding and he had bled to death? Yeah. Well, he yeah. was bleeding pretty yeah. well from he, he had a. To some major veins was in his he, arm. Was cut. he bleeding from the windshield when you pulled him out through the windshield? Do you know? Uh, I don't know. I, well, he was bleeding when we uh, when, when you, we, we started, told him. Yeah. Well, yeah, those are I questions. Hope you went that went home and took notes on all that, Larry, because now that you put that over, over the air, this guy's going to come yeah, back. He's gonna come now, back. That, now that Willie told us all about the laws, how yeah. haphazard they are, and there's no sense in trying to help anybody that's flapping around on the side okay. of the road. And quite uh, frankly, did I say that? So there's no sense in doing it. I'm so glad that Larry asked you this question. <laughs> quite frankly, I really am. Yeah. Well, talk about interpretive, regar- how, how Dave did interpret my statement there. <laughs> regardless of what the law says, file a lawsuit anyways and see what happens. Well, that's that's just it. Anybody well, can sue anybody yeah, for any reason. Right. So, you know, nobody's you ever got, You've got insurance. The insurance is yep. going to pop in and uh, make some sort of settlement. Yeah. So yeah, why well, not? There's a reason sewer has a double meaning. You know? what, do, what are you saying? Well, the sewers, people who sue are... That's you know, what I thought you were saying. Sewers. <laughs> yeah. yeah it has, a, it has two, two different meanings. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're both about the same. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, I, uh, I, that, that's, I, I knew I was going to open up a... No, you clarified, it, you you clarified <laughs> yeah. it perfectly, Willie. You, you clarified it perfectly. My advice again, call the police. Absolutely. Well, that's always the first, yeah, yeah. The first thing to do is call and that's my coming one. from a lawyer that... Yeah. As a big ad down in the city is said, yeah. if, you, if, been, if you think you've been wrongfully... No, uh, I don't have that. <laughs> I don't do any of that kind of stuff. <laughs> oh, thank God. Call 1-800. Well, <laughs> when it boils down, it. expect to be sued if you help someone. Yeah. Well, uh, how, how and when that happened, started, uh, I don't know. Somewhere in our lifetime, I guess, and we went from... Well. You know, taking when, care of yourself and appreciating the actions of others to now nobody's safe from litigation. I, when, I, when insurance started becoming more popular because they are the ones that have money. So yeah, yeah. in the old days, people didn't have insurance and they relied on the charity and kindness of others. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, now you can fall down on your own stairs and sue, sue yourself for for tripping. Don't, yeah. don't choke on the corn I bought in <laughs> <laughs> Oh God! Oh, well, and it, it, you don't even have to hurt anybody. Uh, yeah. That 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 uh, chewed up uh, corn cob that that 
Paul has there might make you guys feel uncomfortable. And that's reason enough. That's I, reason I, enough to, to you know. I was eating the whole cob. I didn't know you had it just two off the little pieces. Didn't know where to stop. Huh? I didn't know where to stop. <laughs> all right, so Willie. How do we get all this? Subject? Yeah, let's get off all this. Nonsense. I don't know. I don't. I would like to think that if somebody saw an accident or they saw somebody in distress, they would try to help him or her, and just go with. Well, this is the moral the, argument. The, yeah, 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 you can you can argue whatever you want to, yeah. but I like to think that it's in our mm-hmm. nature to do that, and, and for the most part, yeah. And I would like to think that any kind of judge that had any common sense would be able to interpret it the right way. Yeah. Well, and say you were trying to do the best you could, and unfortunately... Things happen. Things right. happen. That's right. Yeah. It's like anything else. Yeah. But yeah. your common sense arguments are not necessarily... No. No, because there is no common sense. No. No. There's no common sense anymore. You got anyway, that, right? Willie, um, what about... Uh, I didn't hear anything about Swats' golf tournament, because I think I better put it on my calendar. Okay, yes. Because I haven't done that yet. I think you better because, um, you know, you're involved with that. Well, I was wondering if I should order the pig on the 9th. <laughs> <clears throat> Just let it sit there until the 13th or 16th, whenever this thing is. Well, it, and it, if it's even a week after that, it'll be it'll be perfect. I don't know. Does, does pork improve if it mellows in the sun for oh, a while? absolutely I it does. I don't know. Not only that, it cooks itself. We won't have to have so much charcoal. Okay. Oh, that doesn't make sense. Yeah. Well, as we know it's in the law, Paul, it doesn't, though, Paul, we don't need that. No. That's I mean, common sense. Think if you though. have a pig in the sun. I All mean, you got to do is salt it. In the old days, they salted everything. They did not. They did. Well, they did salt, of course. Yeah. They salted they everything salted to everything. keep it That's cold. Right. Well, to keep it to keep it edible. Absolutely. Yeah. So the, this year, your your pig is going to be covered in, salt. in Morton salt. Well... No matter w- whatever it is you guys do, the pig is always tender, <laughs> just just as if it, it rotted in the the, <laughs> the light of day. But this is a this is a good advertising for you. Yeah, you're, sure. you're serving well, rotted pig. Well, no, I didn't say that. Yes, you did. It's rotting in the sun, <laughs> as if it were. Well, cooking is a fast yeah. form of rot. See, as if it were. As so what, if see, it were. when he was reading all that legal jargon, he started picking up on. See, it. it's those little words that uh, hold great meaning. Yeah, and we oh, got to come yeah. up with a name for this pig. All right, so anyway, uh, <laughs> when is your tournament? It's the 22nd of September. It's mm-hmm. a Saturday. It's always the third Saturday of oh, September, good. and um, it's over at Under Mountain, the beautiful Under Mountain golf course in Copake. And uh, it's, uh, it's it's different in, the, in several ways. It's a, uh, First of all, it's held at a, at a, at a beautiful little nine-hole course. It's an 18-hole tournament. Uh, it's very reasonably priced. Uh, you have a choice of two different nine-hole tournaments or an 18-hole tournament. There's a morning uh, tee-off time uh, for both uh, people who want to play nine holes in the morning flight and the 18-hole people start. And then uh, about 1 o'clock, I think, the uh, people who want to play in the second nine uh, and play a nine-hole tournament can can, uh, tee off then. It's like fifty dollars to play a nine-hole tournament. It's uh, seventy-five to play an eighteen-hole tournament. Uh, if you want a cart, uh, a riding cart, they charge, they charge just a little bit extra, uh, but it's not very much. Um, there are the those great breakfast san- sandwiches that uh, you some in the country boys make. They're the best in the world for a very nominal fee. Uh, same thing at lunchtime: burgers and dogs. Uh, some in the country benefits from that. Um, and then uh, the pig roast after the tournament's over. Uh, the pig roast comes with the price of your ticket, and it's it's great. Uh, Eighteen hole course, pig roast, on course beverages, um, and, uh, and the ability to play on a, a gorgeous little course for like seventy five bucks. You know, you can't go wrong. Um, and uh, this is like I think it's our tenth or eleventh year. I'm not sure, but uh, it's very successful. We fill up. We, because of the size of the course, we can't take uh, you know 150 golfers, so we try to limit it to uh, somewhere between 62 and 66 golfers. It's a, a two-person scramble format, and uh, the the pairs, the twosomes pair up with uh, one or two other twosomes to either form a foursome or a sixome, um, and uh, and you can form your own. You can you and your partner can organize your own group, and a lot of people do. Other people just Say put put us where you want us, and um, 
and it's a great uh, it's a great day. We've been blessed, knock on wood, with decent weather over the years. Uh, better weather than Jump Fest has gotten the last few years, that's for sure. Um, and, and there's nothing better than a, a mid to late September day uh, with a nice weather out on a golf course where there are maples around and apple trees and everything. It's just it's just a gorgeous, gorgeous place to be. And um, and uh, the proceeds, uh, of course, uh, the proceeds from uh, your Sunday in the country efforts go towards your programs, feeding the people at the holiday time, and the money we make in the golf tournament um, uh, go to our youth skiing programs. We provide lessons for uh, kids to learn ski jumping. Uh, we provide scholarships for four different uh, grammar schools. They're after, ski, after school downhill skiing programs. And we provide uh, cross-country equipment and uh, instruction for Salisbury Central School. Probably the only the only public school in Connecticut that has cross-country skiing as a as an after-school activity. Yeah, so, that's pretty wild when you think about it. Yeah, and they're plus, into winter sports because they also do the skating all the time. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. And we're looking to um, uh, improve our facility. We're always improving one way or the other. Of course, the the, the big the big one was when we rebuilt the the, the big tower, the 70 meter jump back in. 2010, uh, but we've been doing other things. We put up lighting so that on the little hills so the kids can jump after school in the winter time. Uh, we're um, we're doing some construction around the big tower to limit the amount of snow that we have to make and move around. It's uh, it's meant to save in uh, electricity costs and also maybe most importantly human labor. It takes. When we put snow on the tower before Jump Fest, it takes two dozen men six hours uh, in one evening to, to do that. We're looking to cut down on that considerably. We're also looking to make our smallest hill, the junior baby hill where kids learn, uh, a year-round jumping hill so that kids can practice year-round. And um, that'll, that'll be huge. We'll be able to hold little tournaments there in the summertime. Uh, our jumpers will be able to compete with the likes of uh, Lake Placid, where they too have year-round jumping, and uh, and then maybe with t- and that's expensive. It's going to cost twenty some thousand dollars to make that uh, hill year-round, and then uh, move on to the mid- the thirty meter hill, the middle-sized one, and and upgrade that. And, uh, so there's always something to do um, to make make things better, and uh, so between. Uh, maintaining the facilities, and then, of course, just uh, you think, well, you make snow and uh, there's not much really in cost to maintaining. We Our, our largest um, monthly electric bill in the winter is $1,800. That's in one month just for, make, for making snow. Our, our snow guns are electric, um, and, uh, yeah, that's how much it costs. That's just the biggest, the, the highest month. Yeah, it's just it's, it's incredible to think that... You don't. Even, you wouldn't even think of something like that when you think about no. ski jumping. No, you wouldn't. And pretty much, you know, if we were to transfer the money we make at the at the, the golf tournament, we could pay that month's <laughs> utility bill right. and a few other things. But uh, you know, it, it gets eaten up pretty quick. Hmm. And we're no different than any other nonprofit. You know, any any nonprofit that's trying to cover bases to 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 you know do their programs the way the way they'd like, uh, money goes fast. And uh, then in October you got the beer fest. Yeah, that's um, that's the Sunday of Columbus weekend. Uh, that's the seventh, I believe, um, over at uh, right at our ski jump site. It's a beautiful place to be, even in the summertime. It's a it's an awe awe inspiring site to look up and see that tower. It doesn't matter if it's February or or October. Um, and uh, it's all tented. It's a it's a rain or shine event. We have several tents, uh, the, the Jane Lloyd Fund and. Uh, uh, people in the, I think, Lakeville Hose people lend us the tents. And we'll have around 40 breweries there, um, each with about a half a dozen different styles of beer or ciders. Um, you are talking about ciders earlier. They, the ciders have become huge in the in the alcohol world. And we have several uh, uh, purveyors of cider there. Um and uh, you, you folks, Sunday in the Country Food Drive will be there again, cooking brats and burgers for us. Um, and uh, it's it's become a big deal. I, I don't know if this is, again, we're, we're going on 10 years maybe now doing that, and it gets a little bigger every year, but not so big that it becomes unwieldy and you're standing in line, you know, minutes and minutes and minutes to get a sample of a beer. You know, you just you walk up to a to a, a a brewery uh, at the tent there, and they just pour you the beer, and you can talk to them about what makes the beer what it is, what's in it, and so forth, and and 
go on to the next. There's no waiting in line like some of these big, like Mohegan Sun's uh, beer tasting where you stand in a line and you, know, you finally get up there and you get a three-ounce sip and you, then you go back to the line with your beer so you can be in line again. There's none of that. It's uh, We'll get three or 400 people, but with 40 breweries, there's no standing in line. So it's a, it's, it's, it's a nice way to uh, to sample all these beers that you've been drinking and, and, and learn more about. And uh, it's $35 a person if you buy your um, ticket at the gate, and it's 30 if you buy it in advance. And there's an online way to do that, and I'm not sure what that is yet. Uh, but you can you can get an advance ticket at State Line uh, Wine and Spirits in Canaan. They they are they're the ones who organize this event for us. It, it takes a package store, uh, like Dylan will tell you from uh, the Sharon Package Store. If you if you want to get a bunch of brewery representatives on a weekend to an event, you you better be buying a lot of their product, and that's what package stores do. They're, that's why they organize these events because they're the ones who have the pull. You know, they say, okay, well, we spend you know fifty thousand dollars a year with you, or a hundred thousand dollars. So, can you do this for us? And that's how State Line gets uh, forty breweries to Jump Fest or uh, to uh, the Brewski Fest. Nice. Yeah. So, uh, for you can save yourself five bucks by getting your ticket in advance. That uh, it's State Line package in Canaan. And it runs one to four. That's just about long enough, you know. <laughs> People, no, absolutely. You know, uh, it's a, it's a, the, the perfect time of day weather-wise uh, in that season. And there's live music. Uh, I'm not sure who our live music is this year. Um, but uh, And then, of course, near the end of that, uh, as we approach 4 o'clock, there is the famous uh, golf ball roll <laughs> where you can buy a golf ball with your name on it, and it's put in a bucket, and then uh, – they they haul the bucket up to the top of the landing hill, and they pour all the golf balls down the hill, and the one that travels the furthest uh, gets a it's a fifty fifty raffle. So uh, um, yeah. Yeah, that's fun. Everybody cheers and goes it, and it's a nice way to wrap up. And then and we have it decorated with pumpkins and corn stalks, and then everybody takes a pumpkin home with them. We have hundreds of pumpkins there. Uh, as decoration, and, uh, and and on their way out, people just you know we say take a pumpkin, and, and they do. So and where do you get the pumpkins and the corn? The corn uh, well, you get stalks that from, again from uh, Daisy Hill. Yeah, one of yeah. our underwriters. Yeah, yeah, yep. you got to promote those folks. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, thank you. I, you know, unbelievable. I, That's great, though. Yeah. So you got a couple of great events, and you know that'll be that. Uh, that's that whole fall festival weekend that I'm sure maybe Jeannie will call in next and uh, yeah. talk to us about. But yeah, uh, all kinds of things going on yeah. that weekend, too, much like this coming weekend. Yeah, yeah. No, Jeannie and the Tri-State Chamber are deeply embedded in that, that weekend, the Scarecrow Contest and all kinds of stuff. But she'll, she'll talk to you about those things. All right, so uh, I guess we'll be uh, we'll be talking to you next week, and uh, there'll be a lot going on the uh, that following weekend. Yeah, yeah, a lot of the things I told you about today, I'll just uh, restate and and, uh, you know, and and aim a little further forward. And um, and uh, if there's anything you want to know about, just go to sportingacause.com. Um, there's a the, the homepage has upcoming events, what's coming up in the next week or so, and you can also go to the calendars to find out. Uh, uh, about other things, and you can pretty much figure out everything you need to know about an event because I, I write a pretty complete profile on each event. All right, well, it sounds good, Willie. Yeah, well, thank you again for letting me on. Well, hold um, on, I got a message from Ron from Copec. I want to see what he says. It's probably. Oh no, that's all right. I thought maybe he was. He's a volunteer. I thought maybe he was going to uh, comment. Um, on the uh, what you were saying about the uh, thing, the Good Samaritan. Yeah, the Good yeah. Samaritan. No, he's uh, he wants me to promote a parade that I haven't uh, never really heard about either. So I'll do that uh, right after we get done chatting with you. Okay. Well, and and one other thing I meant to tell Larry, he was talking about the Vietnam Memorial. Larry. Yeah. No, Larry what? left. He's got, leave? Yeah. he's got a big meeting at eleven. Oh he boy, said. he's a busy man. Oh, you aren't kidding. He's yeah. busy. Where's this big meeting? He wouldn't tell me. Anyway, I, what I wanted to say was that I, uh, years ago um, I had the privilege of seeing the Vietnam m Memorial up, up close, and I remember at the time it was controversial. The, the, it was a girl, a young girl, an yes, architectural student right. who, who devised it, and a lot of people hated it. It's a, it's a big black, black granite monolith yeah. uh, on its side almost, I guess you'd say. 
And uh, it seemed too stark for many. It seemed to lack emotion, but it ended up being, in my mind and many others, the opposite because it, it lists all of the names of all the servicemen who, who died in Vietnam, uh, every, every name. But they're listed not in alphabetical order. They're listed as they, were, as they passed away. They're, they were listed that way. So you would have to search to find names of people you were looking for, and that became part of, of the um, involvement, I guess you'd say. Intrigue, sure. Yeah, yeah. And the wall, the wall itself is ground level. The top of the wall is ground level. So uh, you would walk down as the names grew in depth in the middle of the years when more and more soldiers were losing their lives. And, 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 uh, and, but instead of going up and looking up, you, went, you walked downwards because the, the lay of the land dipped down to accommodate these names. And, and there were a few names on both ends. It was like a reverse bell curve, bell-shaped curve. Uh, at the beginning of the war, of course, very few, there were very few names, and they got more and more and more. And when you stood at the bottom... Uh, and looked up, there are hundreds of names uh, listed in each, and it's very moving. I found it very moving. Um, and I think it's widely, uh, I think all that original controversy went away, I think, because uh, people found it so moving. And then they, then they uh, uh, constructed, I guess you call it, uh, uh, a statue right next to there, three soldiers, uh, three infantrymen, uh, life-size, very detailed. I mean, it's almost eerie. They're so uh, so detailed, um, and, and they put that alongside it. I guess maybe for those people who didn't think it was human enough. But anyway, the net effect is very effective, and uh, you know anybody who's in Washington should take the detour to go see that. Well, I can tell you this: I I went to the um, we went down to Cook at Walter Reed here quite a few years ago, but. And one of the tours we took was of uh, uh, all of downtown there, where all those monuments are. Yeah. And um, uh, Chris and I went to the World War II monument. Because yeah, that's that, impressive, that, too. That had just been opened. But uh, a lot of the folks that went with us on the trip were Vietnam veterans. Mm -hmm. And uh, y you could just tell when they came back from that, from that monument, it, it brought back so many thoughts and you know they were looking at folks that they fought alongside of whose names were on that wall and yeah. that truly was uh it was quite moving just to uh to be able to witness to that yeah i yeah. and tell you one in particular is the uh gentleman that uh, lost his life with <clears throat> um cancer uh from uh agent orange mm -hmm. uh who uh, Chris and I uh, ended up with his two Labrador Retrievers, <clears throat> and uh, that's the ones we have now, Coco and Emma. And he was in Vietnam, and there was an, another gentleman from the VFW post in uh, Dover. <clears throat> and uh, Nick <clears throat> Woodard talked uh, Kevin Ahern into going on this trip, and Kevin wanted to go on a trip, but he didn't want to, he didn't, he flat out refused to uh visit the uh, Vietnam Memorial and uh, the day we went there um, they have a great picture of the two of them uh, with their arms around each other walking down the path mm. to go to the to go to the monument yeah. and uh, it, was it was just so moving you know yeah. just uh, in no matter what monument you went to uh, there was there was family uh, and you could tell they were moved by, by what is down there. It truly is. It, if any, like you said, if anybody ever goes to Washington D.C. or gets a chance to, you need to go and see those memorials. Oh, yeah, and the Korean, the Korean War monument. I mean, it's like a patrol, isn't it? It's like a patrol of soldiers. Yeah. They're all they're all life size, sort of like the life size sized uh, soldiers at, at the Vietnam one. But they, it's a it's a bunch of them, like a patrol. Uh, and uh, that that was startling to me I mean, and, and effective you know the, each in their own way world war ii uh you know vietnam korea they're all they're all very different monuments but uh uh very moving in their own way well you wonder well, if they'll have one to iraq and afghanistan eventually i, don't okay, know. But I would think they would i would yeah, hope they would eventually we lost a lot of folks we over did there. yeah but it's so controversial. I mean, well, we got a Vietnam one. And that was well, Vietnam too. was too. Yeah, I don't think it's any more controversial. Yeah, it's and, um, less than that, I would say. 
Yeah, it was just, it was a different time. It was. Well, anyway, Willie, it's been fun. Likewise. And uh, we'll talk to you, I'm sure, next week. Okay, y'all. All All right. Have a a great week, and thank you again for having me on. All right, anytime, Willie. Don't forget, Sporting a Cause. Dot com. Thank you. Dot com. All right, Willie, have a great day. (laughs) You too. Bye. Take care. All right, uh, I'm surprised. He failed miserably. That's why he's got to go to the bottom of the list. Willie? Yeah, didn't he golf in the the um, Housatonic Youth Service Bureau's golf tournament last yeah, week? Yeah. Did, did, I, I didn't hear anything about that, did you? No, not a word. Did you? And you were here the whole time on Larry. I was Larry. here the whole time. Uh, did, did you hear anything about that? I was listening intently. I wonder how that went. Larry? No, the, the, the golf, golf tournament. T- wasn't he in it? Didn't he, didn't he, he golf He participated, it? yeah. Well, how about Kenneth S. Barker? Was he in it? I, I know. No? No, he. I don't know. No, he was golfing with four other guys. Oh, I see. Remember, he they had their team loaded to win. So if I go over to Falls Village this week, uh, drive over, and he's going to park my car, is that the story? Yeah, he'll park your car, yeah. Drive right down Main Street, oh, okay. Paul. He'll okay. park it for you. Okay, good. All right, pat it, take your muffler off so it sounds like <laughs> a race car. <laughs> yeah. And just roll all your windows down and just drive in town like you're a race car. Can I back in? You'll have to back in. Yeah, apparently. Yeah, because... You, oh. Yeah, because you read the New York that's Times. That's I read the you New York can't. Times. You can't. <laughs> we shouldn't be saying that. You no, know, that's no. just we're, that's we're insulting the bon ton, the elite of uh, the northwest corner there. Well, there's a lot of people that read the New York Times there and are? they're not bon tons. Oh, really? Oh, absolutely. Oh, okay. Well, anyway, Chad, <clears throat> I think you're listening to Hometown Sunday Morning here on Robin Hood I Radio. I the Willie we, Hellhead show. Should we take a short break and... Play a couple of tunes to the top of the hour, you think? Or I think we can do that. All right. How's that sound? It sounds good. All right. Well, here's a little George Strait.
the boss took my name off the payroll. Screw you, man. Picked up my cell, rang my baby's bell, said I'm three miles from home. I said, sugar, won't you put on that sundress I like so much? That was Jason Aldean with Johnny Cash. All right, let's take another look at what's happening in the tri-state area. Tonight, the Sunday evening concerts continues at the Doughboy. That's at Route 44 and Granite Avenue, North Canaan. Guest artist tonight is Andy Stiles. He's a folk singer. This is a concert presented by the Cranford Club. It's free. Bring a blanket or chair. If it does happen to rain, it's just a short walk up the hill to the Pilgrim House. It's the last day of the Dutchess County Fair that happens today from 10 a.m. to 11 p.m. tonight at the Dutchess County Fairgrounds, 550 Springbrook Avenue in Rhinebeck. Visit duchessfair.com or call 845-876-4000 for more information. This Thursday is the last day of the Canaan VFW's Sunset Series. They're going to end the season with two guys in suits and ties, and by the end of the night, somebody is going to go home with a brand new kayak. American Legion Post 178 is having a clam bake Sunday, September 30th. It starts at 11 a.m., and it will go to about 5 p.m. You can get clams, raw or steamed, shaved steak sandwiches, sausage, chicken, chowder, draft beer, soda, water. It's $35 per person, and it's going to be a lot of fun. We also have the Jack Keefe Memorial Law Enforcement 4-Ball Scramble happening Friday, September 14th, with the rain date of Friday, October 6th, I believe that says. The entry fee is $85. That gets you green fees, a cart, um, prizes, everything you need. Call 860-824-0660 for more information on that one. And then finally, the second annual PJ Mannion Golf Tournament is happening Monday, October 1st at the club at River Oaks, 2 Evans Hill Road, Sherman, Connecticut. Proceeds will benefit the Help Live Northeast Transplant Fund to insist with uninsured medical expenses. For Robin Hood Radio, I'm Chad Wildey. Oh, I was waiting for Larry. Um, Farmer Paul, 
You know that Larry left. He, I, mean, I don't see him. Dave. He had an 11 o'clock appointment with somebody. Oh, with somebody. He's a very important person, Larry. VIP, we call him. He, he is a VIP. He is, yeah. That's right. So that's his rapper. Uh, his whole tag. Larry's whole deal was uh-huh. to make sweet corn, so that we could all taste it. Oh yeah. And then we were going to critique it. Uh, did I do station identification? No, you didn't. Oh, I'm sorry, Dave. Hang on, let me just do that really quick. He's sorry. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Robin Hood Radio is WHDD AM and FM Sharon, WBSL FM Sheffield, and WLHV FM Annandale on Hudson. All right. Chad Wildey tries to engineer a show. Take two. I was just wondering, you know, you could be sued for that. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> you probably could. He was grossly negligent. He was yeah. grossly negligent. <laughs> Tried to help out this victim of That's a it. radio station. Don't you feel bad for for Willie I've, researching all that just I because on a whim? Willie. Because I, he wanted to know? I felt bad for him before that. You did? Yeah, I felt bad for him for a long time. Quite a while? Yeah. Well, yeah. he's got a lot of troubles. I mean, he's got that cook shack to worry about in the winter. People freezing while he's warm back there in the, the ticket booth. Oh, I know. Booth? I, I really, personally, I don't think he's too worried about it. Really? No. Oh. I don't think I Barker think is either. It's turned his hair gray. No, <laughs> no, that's not what did. Oh, that. that's not what did. <laughs> oh, okay. We can't, we can't mention what turned that gray. Oh, well, okay. I, the, I, we're not able to oh, talk able about to that. It up. So anyway, yes, Larry yes. cooks the corn to yeah. critique one of our phenomenal underwriters, yes. Daisy Hill Farm. That's right. um, who uh, they're right in the right in the midst of uh, all their tomatoes coming mm-hmm. in. Everything's coming. Uh, great selection of uh, fresh dug potatoes. Mm-hmm. Uh, they've got all kinds of uh, vegetables and different things to uh, choose from, but their corn out uh, has been outstanding this year. So Larry's big thing was he wanted us to critique it. Mm-hmm. So seeing how you were the only one that ate any, any of it. No, I thought somebody and, must have eaten some more because there's only like two two cobs left when I went over and get them. So well, he did, brought in like eight. I thought I thought he would. I, don't I thought he, he would lead the round table. Yeah. Is to the gr- critiquing of it. Yeah, so and I don't think he had how, any. Seeing how you tasted it, what would you uh, now? Did I, you have the white or did you have the bicolor? I had one white and two bicolor. I you think. did. Yeah. So which one did you like better? I like the bicolored one. Yeah, I yeah, do too. Yeah, I'm not a I'm yeah. not a huge fan of the white corn. Yeah. A lot of people love the white corn. Right, they think yeah. it's a lot sweeter, more tender, and a lot sweeter. Yeah. But I just it's never. I always I buy yeah. it all year long as right. long as they have it. It was, it was but excellent. They are. It was oh excellent. no, they've yes. got excellent corn. Yeah, yeah, much better than store store, store bought oh, corn because yeah. that that stuff just sits around for a while. Well, they change theirs. Two or three times a day. Yeah, you know yeah, that's you how much to, they yeah. sell. I mean, yeah. and that's what you. That's the nice thing about living in this area. There this is time fresh, of year, fresh you get everything and, fresh. Yeah, you know, e- even the the fruit like peaches and plums. That's oh, all yeah, fresh. Yeah, and you buy it at the store. It's always hard as a rock. You got to wait gotta for it to ripen. And it's really and not the same. Yeah, but then it's almost like it's fake ripening. <laughs> yeah, you know yeah, what I mean. It, it's yeah. just not the same. No, it's not. But we're very fortunate in this area because there's a mm-hmm. lot of um, good orchards and you know places to get all those right. type things. Strawberry, Absolutely. pick your own strawberries That's right. when you're in. Blueberries too. Blueberries, yeah. everything. Yeah. Well, anyway, that was a good critique. I'm glad we covered Larry on that. <clears throat> Somebody's got to. So I guess uh, the milkmaid's not calling today. She's worn out over at the Dutchess County Fair. Well, I watched a few. Because she uh, posted about 480,000 pictures of, uh, of the kids on Tuesday uh, uh, because the junior showed on Tuesday. But this year the uh, senior uh, show was on Friday instead mm-hmm. of Wednesday, so that was good. Now, um, I did hear that attendance has been, uh, I heard this from one of the directors, the attendance has been very good, and the well, food sales are up quite yeah. a good, quite a bit, and they've had couldn't be a better better weekend yeah. to go there Dane for Cook. sure, huh? Dane Cook. Dane was, Cook. Is that his name? I can't remember his name. The comedian? No, no, no. Who's who's the guy who sang? Oh, Kane. Kane. 
<laughs> Dane Cook. Yeah, Come Dane Kane, Cook. Kane Took? <laughs> no, it was Kane something. What was it? Brown? Yeah, Kane Brown. Uh, he sold out. Yeah. It was the first time they had ever sold out a show. Really? Prior to the show. Wow. So uh, he was a huge draw, obviously. Mm-hmm. And uh, that was on Wednesday. And I think we had showers in the morning, right? It did rain a little bit in the morning, but the yeah. afternoon turned out to be perfect. There was only one night, I think, that it rained. Was it Thursday? Maybe that was later in the night? I can't remember. No, I think they've had a, for they've once, had some they've, had, good a great, they've had some really good yeah. weather. Has so. it been too humid? No. So now uh, the next thing is, uh, what's next week? Columbia oh. County. Columbia County, that's it, and there's yeah. a, that's what I got to read from Ron from Copac, mm-hmm. but don't forget, the Goshen Fair. You got anything that's on the right. Goshen Fair, Goshen's Chad? coming up. That's always Does he have day. anything on the Goshen Fair? Because that's coming up. That's on Labor Day they weekend do, all the time. That is, yes, so is Columbia. It's strictly a three-day event, uh, Friday, I think. No, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Monday. three-day three day event. But let me uh, read what uh, our good uh, friend Ron from Copac sent me. I just got to make it big enough so I can read it. There we go. All right. <clears throat> Line up in place for Columbia County's Columbia County Fair's annual firefighters parade. And they're oh. one of the last ones to do that. Dutchess County used to have the Dutchess County mm-hmm. uh, Firemen's Parade years ago at the fair, but they, they gave that up. <clears throat> More than 40 units from five counties in three states are listed in a preliminary uh Line up for the Columbia County Fair's 68th Annual Firefighters Parade on Saturday, Hmm. uh, September 1st, stepping off at 11 a.m. from the corner of Kinderhook Street and Woodbridge uh, Street Avenue in the village of Chatham. Uh, Trophies will be awarded, and uh, that's pretty cool. Uh, They got a bunch of stuff going on. They they have all the... uh, has all the companies listed that are going. There's uh, tons of people. So that's Columbia County Fair just runs over yeah. the three-day weekend that's too, right? right? Yeah. So yeah. that's a good one. And that's right up in uh, Chatham, I believe, Chatham. right? it is. Now, you went to that. I've, I've never been to been that to many that times. One. You said you liked that one. I did like that one. Uh, there, It's, it's uh, smaller. It's smaller and it's much more accessible. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of like old... It's kind of like old fashioned. It's you know? an old. It's a much more of an old fashioned kind of country fair. So tell me about the uh, the fair you went to yesterday. Well, that in that actually that a, I went to the Brooklyn fair. Now which where is, is Brooklyn, Connecticut? Brooklyn is in the northeast corner of Connecticut. So up it's up towards Mohegan Sun. Somewhere? Yes, yes. You go by you go by there. Um, it's off of three ninety five um, on Route six. So it's about 10 miles west of the Rhode Island border and about 15 miles south of the Massachusetts border. Hmm. So it's tucked right up in the corner. It's tucked up in the corner. But this fair has been going on for more than 150 years. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, it's really got a lot of tradition to it. And it's it's sort of like the Columbia County Fair, I would say. It's uh, Same size? Yeah, it's about the same size. It's got uh, draft, uh, uh, the same sort of competitions for livestock and rabbits and poultry and uh, I, I sat and watched an oxen demonstration and uh, a donkey dememonstration and that's kind of like what they do at the Goshen Fair yeah, too. That's yeah, what they have yeah. different things they have like yeah. lumber yeah, lumber have jacks lumberjacks and stuff like that I mean it's uh, yeah I mean yeah. There are some of these little country fairs are the best don't they have, don't they throw uh, um, axes am axes? I thinking axes I at think the so. Goshen one yeah I, uh, yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, there's a whole the yeah, because thing. were you you were never on a show? No, we were up at yeah. We had somebody. The lady came in. Yeah, was the axe no, drawer? I think I was here. Remember, when, she yeah. brought the axe. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I remember Larry called her an old battle axe. No, she no, did not. You didn't, didn't say that. Was that was her name Strong? Her last name? I can't no, remember. that's the lady who does the uh, horse rescue. Yeah, I can't remember. But anyway, I I do remember her though. I think that yeah, was yeah. What, like when I first yeah came on, she was she well. Was so here. anyway. Uh, so what was the purpose of you going there, Paul? Well, my mother's an exhibitor. She's exhibited there for uh, 30 years. Really? Yeah. And you said last week she makes doggy clothes? Well, I, I looked at the stuff. That's a little bit of what she makes. She Quilts are more her thing. Full quilts for Full beds? Full quilts, yeah, for beds. Yeah. So. And she does well? She has in the past. Um, it's not as much a crafts fair as it used to be, apparently. And she doesn't. She doesn't sew as much either. Her big, her bigger one is the one the week before. In uh, she does one in Rhode Island. 
a similar sort of thing. But it's more crafty. It's more crafty, yeah. So, but uh, she seemed to be doing okay. I bought her fried clams. Just so you know. Yeah, you told me yesterday, Paul. Yeah, yeah. we've already had this. Conversation. Yeah, we've had this conversation. Yeah, they're pretty and good uh, actually. What was I was the surprised. reason you didn't buy me fried clams? Um, well, I didn't have the money. She she gave me, you know, a few dollars. Oh, she gave you the money to buy her clams. Yeah. So but I would actually say, like to go buy them. When you say that you bought your mother fried uh-huh. clams, yeah, you really didn't. Well, that's she paid for her own clams. Oh, it's only it's partially true. She gave me twenty dollars, and that came to twenty four. So I paid the other four dollars. Did you ask her for the four dollars? No. Back? What do you think I have? Some sort of cheapskate? <laughs> no. No, I would never think that at all, Paul. Goodness gracious I wouldn't, me! I wouldn't think that at After all. After she had given me a complimentary ticket to this thing. So she gave you a free ticket. Yeah. And she gave you 20 bucks towards the ride clam. Yeah. So the whole day cost you $4. Well, I had to pay for parking, for God's sakes. Oh, my God. How much was that? That was $5. you got to be kidding me. No. So now we're up to 9 yeah. <laughs> I had to go over there, too. Oh, yeah. Did you, did you leave with, like, $5 worth of, like, asphalt? <laughs> 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 I mean, you must have. Why was everyone laughing when I said I'm not a cheapskate? <laughs> you did it again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a cheapskate. No. No. Wow. I, I did think of you when I bought them. Yeah, I'm sure you did. I did. So I guess Rhode Island's out. I'll never get those ones from Rhode Island again. No, probably not. Oh, you mean the ones when I go up to Massachusetts? There's or a Massachusetts, place in Massachusetts. That's the one I met. I'm yeah. In Sarah, coming Island. coming home, I went right by there. So, so you passed up. Well. So you passed up two. Yeah, yeah. It was whole it was belly around, fried it was around, clams. It was around seven o'clock though, and the, it was, the lines are long. And I oh, just long. Wanted to go home. Yeah. But you wanted to get right home. I am. I am thinking of going up there in Labor Day sometime. So. Well, certainly the lines won't be long on Labor oh, no. Day, Paul, because no. nobody does anything on Labor no, no, Day. No. You heard Willie say They'll that. They'll all be gone. They'll be, all be away. Yeah. yeah, all going to that fried clam <laughs> place. Fried clam place. And apparently there's some others. My brother told me that uh, there's some, like two or three other places that I don't know about that sell them. Well, they don't go there. All right. You just go to the one you just know. Just go to the one I know. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Because we <laughs> never mind. Yeah. Anyway, it is what it is. All right, I was waiting to get a couple of uh, text messages back, but I guess uh, nobody's awake this morning. It must be uh, a sleep-in day here at uh, the tri-state area. Well, I did, I did have an interesting conversation with my brother. Um, he went to a flea market, and he, uh, there was a plastic bag that had a flag in it, so he bought it for $10. And when he opened it up, the flag had uh, 36 stars. 36? Did it really? No, thirty-nine stars. Yeah, so uh, thirty-nine. Yeah, and so so he asked me, "What what do you think that how that come about? Uh, what state was it that you know when they had thirty-nine stars?" And I said, I, "I I guess Nevada," but I was wrong. He said it was a special flag that was made for the uh, centennial. It was in eighteen seventy-six, and Colorado and Utah were coming in at the same time, so they never really had a thirty-nine star flag. Colorado and Utah came in. I guess that kid brought them up to forty. Um, so this this one was made just. They put out a lot of them on the on the assumption that Utah was going to be coming in separately. So it's worth quite a bit of money. Oh, I would think yeah. so. Are you kidding me? Yeah, it was in pretty good shape. I was I was it was a silk flag in good shape. So he was he's thinking it's worth like six or seven hundred bucks. How much did he pay for? Ten dollars. Ten dollars. I know. That's what I said. And he's got other stories like this. He, every time I go up there, he tells me these stories. And then he shows me this stuff. I'm just like, and you paid only $2 for this? Wow, good for him, yeah, though. Yeah, He's got some Revolutionary War letters. I, I don't even want to go into it. it. It's just amazing to me. Wow. Yeah. yeah. All right, well, why don't we play a couple of tunes, and then um, we're going to talk about a fundraiser that's coming up for a, uh, a local guy in Millerton. So, um and, uh, but before we do that, we'll uh, tell you what happened in NASCAR last weekend as they're off this weekend, so there's not too much to talk about. We can talk about what happened at uh, NHRA, tell you who won the, their divisions, and then we'll uh, tell you what happened in the IRL because uh, 
quite spectacular, uh, not in a good way. Oh. Uh, so we'll be uh, right back after this uh, short pause on Hometown Sunday Morning here on Robin Hood Radio. Here's Wyona with Tell Me Why. Toby Keith. Fix it up, boy, the apartment complex. 
quick look at the weather. Cloudy skies this afternoon, a stray shower or thunderstorm is possible, a high of 81. Tonight, partly cloudy skies, a low of 64. Tomorrow, partly cloudy, a high of 87. You're listening to Hometown Sunday Morning on Robin Hood Radio. I'm Chad Wildy. NASCAR Dave, and uh, welcome back to uh, this edition. Now, um, you just hang on, Paul. What'd you do, Paul? I don't know. Oh, God, Paul. It's 914 something. Just hit details, Paul. Anyway, we I, I've got a call because uh, I'm going to interview somebody about this upcoming event. So we're getting you a phone number, Chad. Anyway, in uh, the NHRA last week, um, <clears throat> They had the uh, they had the Lucas Oil Nationals at Brainerd Na- International Speedway in Minnesota, and uh, <coughs> uh, Pro Stock Motorcycle was run by Eddie Kruek. Uh Pro Stock was won by Derek Kramer. Funny Car was won by Jack Beckman, and uh, Top Fuel was won by Billy Torrance. Uh, next week, August 29th through September 3rd. It's the world's biggest drag race. It's going to be a, the U.S. Nationals, and uh, we'll have uh, more of that uh, as we go forward uh, next week. Um, so she's on the line already. Wow, that you and you and Paul work together well. Uh, don't say that. <clears throat> Good morning, Patty. Good morning, Dave. How are you on this beautiful day? Uh, it's, yeah, I'm gorgeous. I'm I'm just great. I've been. Uh, <laughs> We had some nice sweet corn from Daisy Hill this morning and mm-hmm. checked it out and uh, talked about Isn't some that other the things. Best? <laughs> oh, that they they definitely have the best. So, just so everybody knows, uh, I, I previewed that we were going to be talking about a fundraiser that was coming up, and I thought it'd be in my best interest that uh, I call you and talk to you a little bit, a bit about it because you're heavily involved in it. It was the brainchild of. Uh, yourself in the uh, Millerton Fire Department. It's for it's for a, a local uh, gentleman in Millerton. His name is uh, Jimmy Tanner, who's uh, been diagnosed with uh, uh, pancreatic cancer. And, uh, stage four. Stage four. So uh, we all know when you hear stage four, that's, uh, <clears throat> that's one of the hardest ones to beat. So Patty, let's talk about uh, how the community, uh, how it came about and how the community has come together. Well, I'm very good friends with um, Jimmy and Molly. They camp behind us. We have a great time up at camp. And uh, his son, Jimmy Tanner, is also a member of the fire department. So we wanted to be able to reach out and help them and, um, you know, through, with the fire department. So we decided to do a, a fundraiser to help them out to balance out their, uh, you know, expenses and so forth uh, in any way we possibly can. So right, we so decided now, we'd... Yeah, go ahead. You're doing great. No, we, we decided we'd do a, you know, do a chicken barbecue. Uh, this is the season. And um, we, we started out doing 250 tickets. And unfortunately, those are going very fast. Um, We've got them, so far I've put them at the talk of the town. They're $15 a piece. And it's uh, half a chicken, baked potato, corn on the cob, coleslaw, um, no baked beans, Dave. Um, (laughs) I like the baked potato idea, I really do. I like that better than baked beans, to be honest with you. Oh, me too. Yeah, yeah. So uh, we've put them at Elizabeth's Jewelry. So if anybody wants tickets, they can go there. Uh, we've got, got them at the Talk to the Town Deli if they want to pick some tickets up there. Um, we were going to distribute them at Harrington's and at the Legion, but unfortunately I'm out of tickets. So if people want tickets, Bob Snyder is selling them. He's got lots of them. And if you want, I can get you Bob Snyder's phone number. Do you want that? Sure. Okay. How do I do this? <laughs> You're like me. All right. Well, so that's all right. I don't Go need ahead. it right this second. But I'll tell you what. Bob Snyder positively, hands down, has sold 200 of those tickets himself. I know. You know. He's, 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 a, started, he's, he's a phenomenal ticket seller, I'm telling you. 
Oh my gosh, I don't know how he does it, but I think he's got a lift. But um, I, th the first person I thought of was Bob Snyder. No, absolutely. He's my seller. He is my seller. Good for you. And um, so, yeah, but th that's, I mean, those are the places you can get tickets. I, like I said, I'm totally out now. I haven't even gotten it to the Legion or Harrington. That's all right. So we're going to keep an eye on these tickets and see how they're selling them. And toward the, we've got 250 out there. But right. if we need more, we're going to do more. All right. So now this is going to be on the 23rd, correct? September 23rd it's on a Sunday it's from 2 to 6. 2 to 6. And now it's going to be eat in or take out at the firehouse? Eat in or take out at the firehouse. Beautiful. And, and at the firehouse, we also are going to have like a Chinese auction table where people have tick buy tickets and put their tickets in the little buckets for the prize that they want to win. And uh, uh, Helen Grant is helping it, me out with that. She's going to go around to local merchants and try to collect, you know, what she can. Uh, she's going to reach out also in Connecticut because I hear this family is extended into Connecticut as well. Mm -hmm. And we're also going to do a 50-50 raffle that night at the firehouse. So um, oh, there was one more thing Dave I was going to say. It went right out of my mind. That's all right. I'm going to help you along oh. here. You wanted to mention okay. it. Yep. The other thing I was, what I'm doing as well is a lot of people will say to me, um, I'm not going to be here on the 23rd. Um, that's fine. You're more than welcome to make a donation. Absolutely. Anyone who does not want chicken barbecue tickets are more than welcome to make a donation. All right. So the the one the one thing that folks need to know <clears throat> is in order to make this uh, this event really successful, uh, because now uh, Jimmy is how old? He's about he's less than oh. fifty, right? Yeah, I don't know, between 47 and 49. Okay. So here's a family that uh, their loved one uh, has pancreatic, stage 4 pa pancreatic cancer. Uh, his wife is the assistant director of nurses at Noble Horizons. Um, Correct. Quite popular there. <clears throat> um, she's going to have to take some time off as he's being treated as Sloan Kettering. So that Correct. means a lot of trips into the city for for all kinds of forms of treatment. So that means <clears throat> lost time, uh, fuel, and all those necessary things that happen on a day-to-day -day basis. So the Millerton Fire Department and their members have stepped up to the plate <clears throat> to try to raise some needed cash to infuse the family so that they can continue and keep the treatment going because that's the utmost importance in that particular situation. And the least they need to worry about is <clears throat> I don't have enough money to pay for a tank of gas or I don't have enough money to pay a car payment or I don't have enough my money for my, <laughs> my, pro, my propane or whatever it might be. Uh, right. Jimmy, I've, I know him personally. He's a very hard worker. So in order to make this work, folks, we had to have all the food donated. So I'm going to I'm gonna try to get exactly all that food donated. So that means the chicken, the potatoes, the mix for the coleslaw, uh, whatever we need. You got charcoal for the pet. You've got... Um, all kinds of different things that need to need to happen here. So if anybody would like to help out in any way they can, uh, we would like to make this a pretty good fundraiser for this young family who's uh, really, um, really up against it. And I, 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 I want to commend you, the fire department and all its members, uh, even though Jim is not a member, his son is, for stepping Correct. up to the plate in in trying to help this family out. I think it's, I think that's what our small communities are about. <clears throat> mm -hmm. And it is, that's what should happen when somebody has this type of fast moving cancer that that probably uh, it's, it's, it's gonna be a long road. So it is. um, it's gonna be a long road and uh, they're fighters 
and uh, <clears throat> they'll do what they can do. So with that being said, on September 23rd from 2 until 6 p.m. at the Millerton Firehouse, we're going to have a fundraiser. And people are already, Patty, you said people are already stepping up. I talked to Bruce Scott the other day. He said, just tell me how many chickens I'm cooking so that I can, so I know how much help I have to get. And I can tell you what I need for charcoal and what I need for this or what I need for that. That's folks stepping up to the plate to help out for a, for a neighbor. Yep. That's what it's about. Correct? Yeah, that's correct. And, you know... Jimmy's the type of person, I don't care what kind of fundraiser you were having, he would be there to help. He came to almost every fundraiser we ever did, a spaghetti dinner or yep. this and that. And the other thing, he was always there with his family having dinner. Yeah, so, always willing to help. And now, it's, now it's time to give back. So exactly. if you're, if you're just coming in town for the weekend and you'd like to get a good chicken dinner uh, cooked by the world-famous Bruce Gopp, uh, that's going to be served at the uh, firehouse. It's going to be cooked, hopefully, at the Legion. Um, we'll come down and have a great dinner. I, uh, seriously, I love the idea of baked potatoes over baked beans. I really do. Oh, because so do you I. Put, you get some nice baked potato, you put some real butter in there, and I bet they'll even have some sour cream if you stay at the firehouse. So you can put a little sour cream in there because we're going to twist all them little cooks up down there at the firehouse. <laughs> okay. We're ready for them, Dave. Huh? They're we're ready, all for, ready them? for you. They're ready for me? Well, we believe are. me, they don't want me down there barking orders. And let me tell you something else, Dave. If it weren't for you and your wife, we wouldn't be able to do this. No, that's not true at all. We only oh, try yes, to help out. We've done it before, and it's, you know what, for us, for us, we like doing it, and it's probably going to be one of the last ones that we do before we move to uh, Florida. Oh, I, I know. I, I heard that. And you know what, Patty? I couldn't think of a, a, better, a better cause to try to raise funds. I've always, liked the, I've always liked the idea, and this is, how I, <clears throat> this is how it all started. My wife and I would help somebody that was down and out that needed help, and with this radio thing, that's a, how important robin hood radio is is because we can get the word out and it right. became it became such a synonymous thing with the food drive and all the things that we do to get the word out to make all these events successful but mm -hmm. you can start out on a small scale with a fundraiser for somebody in your community it just it only takes somebody to step up to the place like the members of the millerton fire department and say we want to do this what do we need to do? And that's all it takes is one question, yep. and the questions can be answered, and the rest is history. You got the tickets exactly. printed. You, you're already you're already going great. It's going to go perfect. Yeah. You know, I had those tickets one day, Dave. I picked them up yesterday morning, and I have 30 left to give somebody to go to Noble. <laughs> that's all I have. You know, and I don't, I don't have anything left to sell for my, myself, you know, but I'm figuring when it gets closer, you know, we, we can always add on to that 250 tickets. We can. We can always add on, and that's, that's going to be, it, 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 it's all going to work out fine. And you're doing a great job. So. I'm, I'm so glad that you talked to me this morning, and we're going to do this every single week, Patty, from now until the 23rd. I'll be prepared next time. You're prepared this time. You did great for just getting out of bed up there at the camp. Are you kidding? I'm sitting at Brick Block. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so the Patty. died. So you guys say you camp all the time. Where do you camp? We camp up at Wabiko. Okay, so there's a whole group from Millerton up there? No, Jimmy and Molly are just behind us. Yes, we do have a whole group from Millerton. Yeah, that's really. what I mean. It's a whole. It's like a whole family affair, like half the town moves up there. Absolutely. Best place to be on a weekend is just come up and join us on weekends. Well, don't tell me Lenny sleeps in a camper because he's afraid of the dark. No. He's he, not? You know, to listen to that pitter-patter when it rains up there, oh, my God, there's nothing better. 
Oh, uh, you, I bet you, I bet you two get all lovey dovey too, don't you? Uh oh. Oh, I can't. I got my granddaughter in there with me. <laughs> Good answer, Patty. Good answer. <laughs> oh well, this is going to be a great event, and uh, we're going to promote it, and we're going to keep promoting it, and we'll get those sold out, and maybe a few more. Dave, thank you, and thank Robin Hood Radio. All right, honey, you have a good day, and we'll talk to you next week. I'll be calling you. Okay, Dave, thanks. Uh, it's uh, going to be an every week thing, just like I said. Okay, I'll remember. <laughs> All right. Maybe one day I'll talk to Lenny, because I really need to know what he's going to do to help this thing out. What is he doing? He, the, is he going to wrap the potatoes in the aluminum foil, or what? what's his job going to be? He's Bruce's left-hand man there, mister. Left hand, yeah. That's what I'm afraid right of. Right hand, right hand. I'm <laughs> no, left hand. No, right you hand. said that, it. That's a, that's Patty. a meaning. Patty, you said it correct. He's Bruce's <laughs> left hand man. I hope he's not listening. Oh, <laughs> uh, he's. He, I'm sure he is. He's gonna. He's gonna dab the chicken with that brush with the sauce on it. He's gonna be the. He's gonna be known as the dabber. Lenny the dabber. Lenny the Dabber. There you go. That's a good one. <laughs> All right. We'll talk to you later. And uh, great job. Once again, folks, that's uh, September 23rd from 2 to 6 at the Millerton Firehouse. Eat in or take out. $15 a ticket includes uh, baked chicken, half a baked chicken, barbecue chicken, baked potato, coleslaw. What else, Patty? Baked beans. Oh, I don't know. Um, uh, no. We're not sure, really. I think I said brownie. Yeah, so you we did. might even do watermelon. I don't know. There you go. Well, whatever. <laughs> Yeah. Whatever the dessert is, you'll see when you get there. Let's leave it like that. Trust me, they'll get plenty to eat. Yeah, absolutely. It's going to be a fun time, and uh, it's all help a uh, family that is really going to be in need. Uh, they're in need now, and they're going to be in need as it goes on more and more. So let's get out and make this a successful event. We'd appreciate any help that uh, anybody can get or give. Thanks, Jim. Thanks, Dave. All right. You have a great day. You too. Bye-bye. Thanks for the call. Patty Morrison, who uh, is actually uh, spearheading this uh, this event for the fire department uh, because she's very good friends, like she said, with uh, Jimmy and uh, in Molly. And I, <clears throat> I just, for the life of me, I, I always think about it. I'm 64 years old, and I'm pretty fortunate to uh, be able to do what I can still do. And then you see somebody that's uh, probably 15 years younger than I am, Oh, with uh, facing a battle of his yeah, of yeah. his life, you know what I'm saying? And you say to yourself, "Boy, how fortunate you are!" And then people ask me why why you give and give and give. You know why? Because I've been fortunate enough to do that. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and my wife and I are both very happy to uh, to do that, and we're going to continue to do that. So, <clears throat> with that being said, that's true. The community is going to miss you when you're gone. It, it's going to keep going because all yeah. you have to do now is pick the phone up and call Billy Anstead. Because Billy Anstead seriously will do the same thing. He has the same heart that I do, and he'll do the same thing that I do. He will. Mm -hmm. The only problem is you have you need to call him and just give him a heads up, and he knows what to do. And that's why I'm so happy that he and Colleen are taking the food yeah. drive over. And, you know, the food drive is synonymous with these little things that we do for the community and the, mm -hmm. and the radio and stuff like that. Let's not <clears throat> let's not get convoluted here. Uh, we're still going to be a local NPR radio station that is community based and community oriented. And folks don't have a problem calling in on hometown Sunday morning. Right now, they shouldn't have a problem with calling Marshall Miles anytime and leaving a message here mm -hmm. at WHDD. I've got an event going on. We need to promote it because he'll be the first one to be able to get it on the air for you. Well, he does a lot of promotion. He stuff does a lot of promotion. And, and, yeah, sure. You know, if you call Billy Instead, he'll be able to he'll be able to talk you through everything mm -hmm. that we do because he knows it all. You know, he knows as much as I do, and he has the same heart he and his wife Colleen that Chris and I do. He's community mm -hmm. oriented, and he'll help out. They'll help out in any way, whether it be advice. That's all he asked me to do was give them s some advice as to, to how, go, how to go about what they're trying to, 
to accomplish down there. And it's, it's quite simple when you think about it. The mm-hmm. mathematics is quite simple. The, the thing you have to do when you do these fundraisers, though, is to secure, to make sure you get all the food donated. Because then it's, when you have a $15 ticket, it's 100% of that yeah, ticket to goes to the, to the sure, recipient. Yeah. And I can't imagine what it costs for parking and what it costs to drive back and forth to New York City two or three or four times a week, however many times they got to go down oh, there to okay. Sloan Kettering. Sure. Uh, Paul, you know that you yeah. made you you know the rules. Yeah. Certainly, probably there's some parking you can get validated at, at Sloan Kettering, but some of it you may not be able yeah, to. I'm the not, lots could be full. I'm not so sure. About and that. so yeah. you know what? Guess what? <clears throat> yeah. It's all cost. And then if the if the spouse has to take personal time off right, to, right. to to do to be. help all this, then it, then there becomes a whole quagmire of uh, medical coverage. Mm-hmm. Because uh, she has medical coverage and right, this and that, right. it, it becomes a whole quagmire, and it becomes it really can become uh, quite a disaster. So That's let's right. not let's not have the family have to worry about that. Let's try to let's try to get them uh, going forward. Mm-hmm. All right. So with that being said, now I was going to uh, You're gonna do something I told else. you about uh, NHRA. Yeah. Now I'm going to uh, try to. Uh, I was. I don't know. I was going to tell you who won last week's race at Bristol Motor Speedway. And I can do that, Paul, because it came right up. Last week was Bristol. Kurt Busch came away the winner there, followed by Kyle Larson, Chase Elliott, um, Joey Logano, Eric Jones, Clint Boyer, Ryan Blaney, Alex Bowman, Jimmy Johnson, and Kevin Harvick rounded out the top ten. Now, the other thing I was going to tell you about was uh, IndyCar. Um, no. wonder what happened to that. Is that going on right no. now? No. IndyCar last week was at Pocono. Uh, That's right. I can just yeah. talk off the top of my head here. Uh, was at Pocono Raceway down in Pennsylvania. Mm-hmm. Uh, those cars qualified at uh, 200 and close to 230 miles an hour. So it was a very fast track. Uh, lap number seven, uh, there was a horrific crash, crash between uh, def- uh, between uh, IRL champion uh, Ryan Hunter Ray, who uh, we interviewed right here at uh, Lime Rock Park years ago when he was in the uh, <coughs> Skip Barber series, and Robert Wickens, who drives for Schmidt Peterson Motorsports, who uh, uh, <coughs> Pat and uh, uh, Anne's, Pat and Ann Deneen's uh, daughter Kelly works for him. Uh, Robert Wickens was uh, in currently in six in the standings in the IRL as a rookie. Uh, he tapped the rear wheel <coughs> of uh, Ryan Hunter Ray's uh, car when he was trying to pass him at over 200 miles an hour. <coughs> sent him airborne up over the top of uh, Hunter Ray's car and into the uh, catch fence, um, <clears throat> which resulted in uh, a two-hour delay to uh, fix the fence. He was airlifted to uh, to uh, Cedar Valley uh, Crest Hospital in Pennsylvania. Uh, he was uh, awake when they put him in the uh, helicopter. He has a uh, severe spinal injury, <clears throat> which they operated on this week and put rods in his back. He has two broken legs, a broken arm, and a contusion on his heart and lung. <clears throat> um, we're not sure. Uh, the doctors don't know the extent of the um, of his uh, spinal cord injury <clears throat> because um, it's it's too early to tell. Uh, he may end up being paralyzed. They're not sure. There's no way to tell. Uh, The news this morning on him was that he had all those surgeries and they were all successful. Uh, He was breathing on his own for the first time, Mm. uh, which was great, and he was talking with family members. Mm. So that's all positive news, Mm. um, but unfortunately for a young man like that, the recovery period could be years years and years, and it may be uh, career-ending for that gentleman. 
but that's the dangers you take when you um, <coughs> when you when you do that. Last night they had an IRL race. The, uh, the they run three weeks in a row until their final. Uh, last week they were or last night they were at Gateway International. Will Power came away the winner there. Um, so the series continues. Uh, Robert Wicken's car on Schmidt Mo- Peterson Motorsports wasn't in the race. It sat outside the hauler. Um, there's still consideration if they're going to get a, a, a driver for the last two races because see that's all about sponsorship mm-hmm. and uh, all those things that go along with that. Mm-hmm. So. Certainly, our uh, thoughts and prayers are with uh, his recovery. That's for sure. You hate to, uh, you hate to see anything like that. So, uh, I think that's about it uh, for this week's uh, hometown Sunday morning. Don't forget, uh, Patsy Klein. Uh, always, Patsy Klein is playing at the Sharon Playhouse from now until September second. So you've only got this week uh, to go there, right? Sunday is the end. The second, yeah, because yeah, Saturday's the second, first. Right. Labor Day weekend coming up. Uh, big weekend at Lime Rock Park, the uh, annual Vintage Festival. I think it's the 36th annual. Uh, it's going to kick off on Thursday with that uh, parade of sports cars and uh, old-fashioned race cars that goes from uh, Lime Rock Park. It winds its way down 112, turns right at the uh, light at Hotchkiss School, goes up through the, the uh, hamlet of uh, Lakeville and Salisbury, goes around... Uh, Noble Horizons, and then uh, back through again and over back over to uh, Falls Village where it ends up on the main street. Uh, the street is closed. It's like a street fair, folks. It's free to anybody. Uh, just come and uh, you can talk to the drivers. You can look at the cars. They have great food. They have um, uh, things to buy for drinks and this and that. It's just, it really is a fun time. And then the uh, racing kicks off. Uh, Friday with these vintage cars, uh, Friday and Saturday, and then Sunday is the uh, uh, huge uh, car show. Uh, basically takes up the entire track with uh, different year cars of uh, vintage race cars. Uh, so go to limerock.com, I think is the, uh, is the uh, thing, is the website. And you can get all the information you need. But it uh, should be a fun-filled weekend here at uh, in the tri-state area. And don't forget, uh, like Paul said, it's probably the uh, best sweet corn he's had all year, right from uh, Daisy it Hill. It was good. And don't forget, uh, <clears throat> this weekend is the grand opening of the uh, Cider Barn at another one of our underwriters, uh, McEnroe Organic Farm, yeah. right there on Route 22 in uh, Millerton, New York. So... All in all, it's uh, going to be a fun-filled week coming up and a uh, fun-filled month, I think. So stay tuned uh, for more Hometown Sunday Morning uh, next week right here on the Labor Day edition of uh, Hometown Sunday Morning. We'll uh, talk to you next week. No country music was harmed in the making of this song. This is only a test. I wish I had some shoes on my two bare feet And it's getting kind of cold and it's painted on cut off jeans I hate the way this bikini top chafes Do I really have to wear it all day? Yeah, baby I hear you over there on your tailgate whistling Saying, hey, girl, but you know I Shaking my money maker ain't never made me a dime And there ain't no sugar for you in this
Survived our share of bar rooms, stared at many motel walls. The years in Carolina and all the one night stands. What kept the fires a burning? Back then Was you the fans We two stepped out to Texas Round and round the dance hall floors Played the fair in Minnesota 